everyone what is up twitch i don't know i'm saying that like we haven't been talking for like 10 minutes already in the chat but uh what's up guys this is john schnitzer did i pronounce your last name correctly you did a great job great. Thank you pulled it off <laughs> he's the director <laughs> of haunters are of the scare and um a lot of you have already watched it as because it's been our movie of the week uh, i hope you guys enjoyed it but yeah so we have him here you guys hey we both got that haunters merch on though check it out on their site i don't know if you guys actually have it on your site <laughs> You have the collectible Kickstarter hey. shirt that uh, Dave Clock did. Um, the one I have, we're finally going to make available to the public soon. Oh, so. Wow, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. But for right now, I can yep. feel special is what I'm hearing. Well, that one, I don't think we're ever going to oh, sell again. Oh, really? Yeah, the one that, we'll, that we will sell is going to be this one. Okay. The Adam Rabelais one, the, the, the real Technicolor explosion one. But that one, the Dave Clock one. You know, I don't think we're ever, I think that was like uh, just for Kickstarter. Maybe one day we'll do it again. Yeah. I, I love that art so much. It's great. But I just love this one too. The, the colors just explode. Yeah, That's... no, that shirt's really nice too. I think like, I think when I got this one, this is like my only option. So I was like, hell yeah, I'll take it. Because I remember <laughs> um, I was at your panel at Scare LA and I won it for, I don't remember why, like as a ticket or something. <laughs> The raffle. At a raffle. Yeah. I'm the, I love raffles. I love I love going to places and winning prizes, especially with a raffle, <laughs> because the suspense of the two, two, like oh, three, oh, it's so close, you know, and then then you then you lose it and you lose your mind. It's just exactly. so much fun. <laughs> Everyone is just saying they love your view. Like they're just like you look legit, guys. He's a director, obviously. He's in you know Venezuela <laughs> right now or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great view it's really cool it is. oh my gosh well thank you so much for coming on um so far from like the feedback at least i've been getting is that everyone really enjoyed the film um personally you know i'm a haunter i've been going to haunt um this for the chat a lot of these people this is definitely something new that they were seeing like just this whole another world so um i think everyone's pretty excited with a lot of questions but if you don't mind cool. getting into it uh so Anywhere in starting in a documentary, I just want to know, like, why this story? Why Haunters? Like, what was the inspiration to start this film? Well, you know, I I love haunted houses. I love everything Halloween. You know, my birthday is October 19th, which is great because this year, the movie Halloween comes out yes. on my birthday. Oh, wow. I <laughs> am way too excited to see Jamie Lee Curtis kick some ass. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited for this movie. Um, so for my birthday every year, I force all my friends to go to a bunch of haunted houses. <laughs> and <laughs> it's always fun because there's people that love haunts and the people that have no business being there. And I've seen every kind of meltdown in the world. Beautiful. And I was always fascinated by them because I wouldn't take them to an extreme one. I, we would go to like Universal Studios or Knott's or my favorite home haunts. And like... One of my friends, like my friend Tina, would have these meltdowns and she would just start crying and freaking out and like nothing would happen. <laughs> but um, I was always fascinated by that, but I always loved haunt design and the whole idea of it. So I thought, okay, let's do it. I want to do a feature film. I want to do a documentary about haunters, you know, because it's like yeah. whenever, whenever you see a documentary on them, it's usually like they're either painted as lovable losers or like, oh, this is this little thing that they do. But for me, it's like, if you do one on your mother's driveway or you do one of the biggest ones around, you have to sacrifice so much mm -hmm. of your time, money, energy, away from family to go all in on something. And which is funny because then I went all in on a documentary about a bunch of people that go all in on their haunts and I went down a crazy rabbit hole. I mean, I didn't even know that that the movie was gonna go in this direction until it did. <laughs> it took me in this really crazy <laughs> rabbit hole down some disturbing <laughs> stuff. I mean, it really, it's funny how things work out. Yeah. But this is such a fascinating story and the characters were so interesting and I had this unprecedented access. I was like, you know what? This is something that's happening right now. This, this idea of haunts that are getting so extreme yeah. that they blur the line between like, you know, uh, simulation and true terror that I was like, okay, that this is where the story is going. And there are haunts that exist now that I'm too afraid of. <laughs> that's fascinating. 
that's fascinating to me. I didn't yeah. think that would ever happen, you know? Yeah, that's, that's probably going to be a crazy, like, idea, because um, you've probably been going, like, for, you know, a longer time since you were probably a teenager. Like, what was your first haunt that you ever went to? Like, okay, the first haunt I ever went to, okay, I'll count this. When I was in kindergarten, um, <laughs> my neighbor did this really cool thing where you, on Halloween, you knocked on the door, they opened it up, and it was this... Um, black curtain it was all black lights and they would just have oh you hear that yeah nice airplane right in your shot <laughs> this is just like what it's like making haunters like all right let's be quiet now for a while and then we'll get back to the interview just right after the okay so up, guys. they did this thing where they would like wear these black light masks have different black light objects and they would make it look like they were ghosts floating around and it would it was awesome and wow. i loved it but the real first walkthrough haunt, I was in uh, elementary school, and I think I was like in like second grade, and okay. one of my neighbors put on a haunt that was so scary. And I went through it maybe 10 times. These are, all, okay, that's the first walkthrough haunt, but the first actual haunt that I can count as a haunt, well, it's a dark ride. Haunted Mansion at Disneyland when I was five years old. True. Five years old, yeah. Haunted Mansion at Disneyland, and every time I'd go to Disneyland after that, I would tell my parents that's where I had to go there first. <laughs> it was always my first ride and the last ride I would do at Disneyland as a kid. That's I was amazing. just obsessed with the Haunted Mansion. Look, I went to like uh, a Jewish private school when I was a little kid, the mm -hmm. Hebrew Academy, and I kept carried my books around in a plastic jack o' lantern. And the <laughs> rabbis were like, "What are you doing walking around with a plastic jack o' lantern?" I'm like, "This is." Look, this is this is what I care about. That's <laughs> <They were> all... <laughs> I've loved Halloween forever, so you okay. know I just love that it now it's bigger than it's ever been. Yeah, it's fascinating to me. No, uh, that's why I, I love. I remember I think it was like 2016 when you did your first. I don't know if that was your first panel at Scarlet, but like that's just been something I've been obsessed with like for a while. It's just like different haunts and like you said, like the different immersive haunts. Like sometimes I would just stay up like looking up haunts and be like, they would do this, people would do this. And then like, I literally go to Scarlet and I see your panel talking about that. And I'm like, this is crazy. So I had to go, I don't know. Like, but I understand how you feel and stuff. And that's why like, if you guys watch the movie, if you guys like were like that when you were little, you understand. Cause even when Char's like, I don't want to be a princess. I want to be a skeleton. I'm like, so, I love so Char. Real. Love Char. I. We've become such good friends. We hang out all the time, and her and her husband come up, or her and her daughter will come over, and we all just hang out together. It's like a lot of fun. We've we've gone on trips together now. Oh wow. We went to we went to Haunt Con together in New Orleans. <laughs> That's amazing. So you guys like went to the Twin Peaks, the Twin Peaks little pop up thing together. I was so jealous. Oh yeah, it was so much fun. Um, so what do love you what do you love about haunts? Is it like the getting scared part of it? Is it all of it, or like you know, is there a certain part that just like yeah, I want to go to these? Look, it's like a there's like a a thing in the in the movie where there's that little boy with the Taco Bell hat. Yeah. <laughs> that okay, so he's trying to convince my nephew to go through Donald's haunted house. Donald, the guy who looks like the Terminator. Okay. Yeah. Um, my nephew was like, I can't go in there. I thought for sure my nephew's going to be in the movie. We're going to interview him. He's going to go through it. He stood outside there. He was screaming, I'm not going in that haunted house. He was. I was like, I did not use the footage, um, but I, I really should have. <laughs> he was having this great meltdown. But then that little boy said, look, if you go through that haunt, you come out, and you'll feel like a man. And I was like, what a funny thing to say because – what does Char say? It makes you feel like a kid again. So there's this dual, like this double-edged sword, this really cool thing going on where it's, um, it's a dual rites of passage. Think of it this way. A kid wants to feel as brave as an adult. Yeah. And adults want to feel as carefree as kids again. So when I was a kid, I did want to feel brave and powerful to go through these haunts. And I, that's what, I also worked at these haunts so I could scare people. And as an adult, I want to scream my head off. I mean, look, I was just watching the news today, and I was like, oh, man, I'm ready. I'm ready to go to a haunt <laughs> right. and scream and not think for one second about 
anything else because you can't really think about your problems <laughs> when someone is chasing you or you're getting an electric shock in a hunt or you're crawling through a tunnel that starts filling up with water which <laughs> happened to me at 17th door last year that was really scary um it's just it's incredible because it's such a wild experience i mean when you go on a roller coaster all you can do for that moment is just scream and scream and scream mm -hmm. and what's so much more interesting to me about these haunts is that you're walking through them and then you have to choose if you're going to keep going or not yeah and it's like you're testing yourself you know I, I love that there's just there's and now there's so there's such a diversity there's 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 a, as many haunts as there are uh, sub genres of horror mm -hmm. you know everything from you know supernatural and horror comedy to straight up you know slasher movies and everything in between yeah. And now there's a haunt or a simulation or a horror experience that represents every single one of those. And I like every subgenre of horror, so it's fun. It's fun to be able to go, okay, I want to see what I would do with this. I want to see what I would do with here. You know, it's really fun. Yeah, no, that's a great. And, like, even though it sounds, like, weird going through an intense haunt, it's like, but wait, you're putting you through this, and it's just like a test. Can you make it or not? And you can quit at any time except for, obviously, the one. <laughs> As long as there's a safe word, right. if there's no safe word, then what are you doing? You know, that's, look, McKamey Manor, if they had a safe word, it would still be just as scary. And I kept telling that to Russ, you know, you know, you can totally have a safe word, it'll be just as scary. You know, it'll be really scary. Yeah. And he's like, no, 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 that's the whole point. No safe word. I was like, no, dude, what do you... When I found out that Russ didn't even put himself through any of the haunt, like he didn't even test any of it out on himself, then I, I, that's when I was like, what? Yeah. You cannot not have a safe word and also not know how this makes somebody feel. Yeah. You know? It's no, a, for sure. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> that's such a crazy experience. I still can't believe any of it. Uh, yeah, I know. I, that McKinney Manor <laughs> stuff, I, I had nightmares for months. <laughs> <laughs> so, there weren't even exaggerations. I just remembered exactly what happened. And I'd be like, ah. <laughs> and you, so, you got to go in and film it, too. So you were, like, there when it was happening, right? Yeah. Through, oh, I was, wow. Yeah. I was filming. Um, I mean, he really didn't want me to, to film the behind the scenes. But I told him that's the whole point. The whole point is, like, when I saw his videos, I was like, okay, this is, it looks like Rob Zombie movies being projected on the Titanic while it's going down. It looks like total insane. I was like, what the hell is this? Yeah. Who's filming this? And then I meet him and it's like, he's like, hey, how you doing? I was like, oh, this is even creepier now <laughs> because he's like <laughs> wearing a polo shirt. He's yeah. got like a, you know, some, a Disneyland lanyard with the, with his video camera on it. And he's like, hey, let me take a picture. I'm like, and you know, I wanted to film his face while he was filming people. And towards the end, there's that there's a, those parts where we split screen and you see what he's filming and you see his face. Mm -hmm. And we get to see what he's doing while that's happening. Because my imagination kept running wild. Like, wh who is this guy? What's he doing? His voice changes when he starts filming people. You'll notice when you watch the movie, yeah. he starts, he goes, where are you going? And he has a sinister laugh all of a sudden. He becomes this kind of different guy. And before that, he's always like, hey, how you doing? And once he starts filming... It really is like a horror film. It was like a horror film watching that. But oh God. being able to film the behind the scenes, that's when different revelations kept coming out. Remember, like, mm -hmm. that lady said, I really want to work here. And I said, I just watched her go through it. And it was like a nightmare watching her go through yeah. this thing. I was holding my chest while I was filming at times. And I, I had panic attacks while filming at that thing. Oh, no. And I saw her freaking out. And I was really, I mean, look, it goes on for hours and hours and hours. I mean, I think when, when I was there with filming her, that went on for almost five hours. And Wow. And then at the end, she's like, I really want to do this. And I asked her why, and then she says, because I want to hurt people. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do this. And I was like, whoa. All I could think of was, I don't have to come back here again. We kind of got the whole story now yeah. about how this works. It's like the Fight Club of Haunted Houses. You know, you something crazy happens to you, then you want to do it to somebody else. You know, which is kind of a trip to think about. I mean, it's like um, 
it's a real crazy thing to think about because yeah. <laughs> think about it this way too like um fraternities and sororities there's hazing that goes on but it doesn't go on for eight hours it goes on for like a year mm-hmm. and then at the end of hazing somebody then your prize is that you get to do that to somebody else for like what three more years and that's your prize you get to torture someone for three years and the difference is nobody's died in McCamey Manor yet but people die every single year in a fraternity really? every year someone gets killed in a fraternity hazing thing it happened this year this year someone they had this kid drink over he, he was drinking about over and over again and then he, he died wow. you know he's he someone that he there's always um i saw a documentary about um a fraternity in the south uh for band for band and <laughs> the hazing was so bad like someone got their legs broken you know and yeah it's all it's, look it up Wow. fraternities hazing and look at how many people die doing that but that's at harvard that's at yale you know you realize that um some of our past presidents that went to yale were in skull and bones and they had really disturbing hazing that would go on um that's and i'm not even gonna say what that was you could look at it <laughs> don't even don't, don't don't look that up you're too young to look that it was oh, gross God. it was gross oh I'm no saying. So it's like really crazy stuff. So it, I try to keep everything in context. Mm-hmm. You know, I think about it. You know, I'm making the movie, I'm not trying to judge anyone either. Yeah. I'm just trying to show exactly how they are. I don't want to do any voiceover narration. I don't want to tell you how you feel. It's like, look. I mean, even Russ said, that's exactly who you've got exactly how I am. Yeah. Which was crazy. Yeah, because you just told the story. You're, there's like your opinions, not in there. You just ask the questions, they tell you the story, and that's what you got. And I think that's what, like, it's just like a really good part of it because it just showed every side. Um, one thing I was gonna bring up though, I did notice that in Blackout, there was one guy who's a fraternity. After he goes through Blackout, he's like, yeah, this is like really cool. I can bring the frats here, like the newcomers or whatever here for like the fraternity. And I'm like, yeah, th- like, I wouldn't, that's not something I would just throw my friends into, but all right. But that makes sense now, now that you say that. I don't know, it kind of connects in a way. It's probably safer. I mean, the guys at Blackout, they test everything on each other before they do it. That was the thing I captured in the movie, because I didn't realize that, that they surprise each other with the stunts. That's what was so cool. <laughs> oh, so, like, one of them just, you know, that was the part of the movie that I was so blown away by when he said it was, He's just cleaning up and the lights go out and he's like, uh oh, something's gonna happen. And then all of a sudden the guy comes running out and hits him with a staple gun. Yeah. So that's fascinating because they they know what it's like and it's too much. If they can't take it, then it won't be in the show. If they can take it, then you'll experience it. Yeah. You know, so that is, to me it's like it's interesting. It's not definitely not the top of my list of like, oh, I've got to do blackout. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, I don't I didn't join a fraternity either. I don't want to be yelled at. I don't want someone yeah. doing something. I kind of like, you know, leave me alone. You know, I was bullied growing up. I don't need it now. Right. Like, I understand what it's like to have, you know, someone do crazy stuff to you. So, um, but it's interesting. It's really interesting. It's out there. It's interesting that people can, can do it, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, Jay Jeffries wants to know, how does choosing locations work for documentaries? There are thousands of haunted houses across the country, but what is behind the shoot decisions you made when filming Haunters? Like, what was the decisions like for the different haunts and stuff? Right, I mean, well, number one, Southern California, I love the haunts here um, because we don't have a lot of space. So they have to get crazy creative. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how you get Delusion, the interactive haunted house play with all the, they're only in the movie for like two minutes. I filmed there for like three years and (laughs) In my book, yeah, I know. Like, it was every edit was like, oh, 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 this is painful. <laughs> I want to show you everything. Yeah. But uh, so I, I stuck around here because, look, Universal is right over here. You know, McKamey Manor was, look, that's the most extreme thing in the world. Mm-hmm. So, and I, so I can get down to that one. So I was looking at the ones that are not too far from me, but are landmarks that everyone either needs to know about or should know about. It. But like Donald wasn't a landmark, you know. Nightmare on Logoberry is not famous. Yeah. He just has an amazing story. Um, for more more than anything, I'm looking for who has the story. Like Russ McCamey has, you know, for better or for worse, 
<laughs> the craziest, wildest story you could ever think of in the haunt space, ever. You know, and yeah. Donald Juleson has a great story. Char Mayer, legendary scare actor Char Mayer, uh, it was an incredible story. You know, so I was looking for that. Meanwhile, there were some months I just I had to go out of town for. I went to New Hampshire for Haunted Overload, the giant skull that you see in the movie. Um, so I went out there to get some of that footage because it just looked, let's, it's gorgeous what they're yeah. doing over there. And it's beautiful. The ones that have more story like that, that still have beautiful stories that couldn't quite make it in the movie, because if you put all the different stories in the movie, my first cut of the movie was like 13 haunts. Oh and it was, gosh. it should have been called Hauntapalooza. It was just haunts. And it wasn't enough where you got to connect with the people and get to know them more. So I did take 30 minutes of bonus features and put it in the bonus features. So if you get on iTunes Extra, or the DVD or the Blu-ray, it comes with 30 minutes of bonus features, and that's more with Delusion, Haunted Overload. You get to see some of Scare School and Not Scary Farm. You get to see um, John Murdy from Universal Studios' Halloween Horror Nights. You get to see the first haunt he ever did as a kid, oh, wow. which was a, a Star Wars haunted house. Yes. <laughs> he did it the year Star Wars came out. He made the, his own costume. So we have all the retro pictures. Mm -hmm. There's even the behind the scenes of Los Angeles Haunted Hayride. Blackout's origin story and Blackout teaming up with Jason Blum from Blumhouse to do the Purge Live Fear of the Night and you have all the behind the scenes of that. It's really cool. It's pretty awesome. So no, there's a lot of there's a lot of cool stuff there. It's um I I just wanted people to be able to haunt out <laughs> with the bonus features. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, the locations are all they all come down to story. What's the story? Why are we there? Yeah. That, I mean, that makes sense <laughs> now that it's kind of like you just want to put, yeah, you want to like cover all of them, but yeah, obviously yeah, there has yeah, to be a story huh? context. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever been to an extreme haunted house like Blackout before? Oh, yeah. or which, which ones? My favorite extreme haunt is the 17th door in Orange County. Um, the 17th door in Fullerton. Um, it's crazy. Every year they find one new thing that I go, I didn't know that would freak me out, but it really really bothers me. They, what they do is it's part extreme haunt, part interactive and immersive theater. It's all those things combined because mm -hmm. um, it's so beautiful. It's like the, the set decoration is like a feature film. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Like last year and this year, it, it took place in a um, prison. And... They started off with a virtual reality thing last year that scared the hell out of me. And the, how the 17th door works and why it's so special, they have 17 doors. The first door is number one, and it's red. You can't open it. The second, it goes green. The door unlocks. You go inside. The door shuts and locks behind you. And then whatever happens in that room goes on for either a minute or eight minutes or whatever. Every room is a totally different time length. So you have no idea how long you're in the room before. And some of it is like just your group with one actor in a very dark room, and they can touch you. Uh, some of it is crawling through tunnels that may be electrified and shocking <laughs> you, and filling up with airbags and closing in on you. Yeah. They, are, they have elevators that go up that are terrifying. Last year they had an elevator going up that kept shaking the whole time, and you're like, oh my god, what's about to happen? They have things in there that are freezing cold. They have things that are going on in there that are really hot. And it's like this wild adventure that by the time you leave, you're like, what in the hell was that? And you can call the safe word and skip a room and not have to leave the haunt. So if, if, a, if you're in a room that's covered in cockroaches, which they've done before, where cockroaches are everywhere, it's like a, you can call the safe word and not miss out on the next room. Mm -hmm. So I like that a lot. Plus, Char Mayer is there teaching scare school and teaching the scare actors, which is great because you can have extreme experience but know that you're in good hands. These are people that were trained by probably the most trustworthy monster in haunt history. Yeah, like was that your first extreme haunt you've ever been to too, or no? Hmm. No. Interesting. I don't know. I've been to so many. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Ask me what my first extreme haunt that I went to was. I don't even know anymore. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anymore? That's amazing. The first time somebody shocked me in a haunt, I guess. But I was just going to ask, like, like, 
Would you like? Were you like kind of freaking out a little bit before you went in? Because when I first went, Wait. cause that was my first extreme hop. And like when I signed the waiver, I was like, "What am I doing? Why am I doing this?" But then it's so much fun. Yeah, like said, no, all those it's really. You experience. Oh, it's great, and it's so crazy. I don't know. Like I was when, but whenever you go to an extreme hunt, be a pro. Bring your own Purell. Bring <laughs> your own towel. Bring a different shirt. <laughs> bring a large jug of water. So you, know, so you can just get all the whatever gross stuff is on you off and yeah. have garbage bags on the seats in your car. <laughs> so that whatever. <laughs> and then wear shoes that you can get filthy. You know, be a pro. <laughs> and people get mad and they go, this happened to my shoes. Like, well, yeah, you're in an yeah. extreme hunt. Things are going to happen, you know. Come it's on. Like, you need to, uh, <laughs> what's called, you need you should make like a tip page before haunt season starts. It's like, guys, you know, if you're going through an extreme haunt, bring these things. Probably not a good idea to wear heels. Just saying. Yeah, I know. I've been thinking about doing like extreme haunt pro tips. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my gosh. Batgirl wants to know what type of haunts would you like to see in the next few years? Is there like a haunt that's not out right now? They'd be like, this would be cool. I know the haunts that are coming out that I'm excited about. There's oh, a lot. Thanks. This year, this year, there's a lot of really exciting haunts. Um, like Darren Lynn Bowsman, um, the director of Saw two, three, and four. Um. He also has a movie out that's touring the festival circuit right now called St. Agatha. He created something called the Tension Experience. Have you heard about the Tension Experience? Oh, yes. I had some friends go through that. Um, I'm so jealous. Mm -hmm. I had to go through that. Yeah. Yep. So Tension Experience was like, you know, it was like a, it's like the movie The Game with Michael Douglas where it's, all, it's almost like a you're in a cult and it happens, the well, second you buy your ticket, then you start getting phone calls. Then things oh. start happening at your house. Then things just start happening all around you. Like all of a sudden, you buy the ticket, it starts. Oh, damn. And then you finally go to a site-specific place, and you don't know where that place is going to be until a couple hours before. And then you go through this wild experience. So that was the tension experience. Last year, he did the lust experience, which is like a whole other level of it. This year... He's doing something called Theater Macabre. And I don't know a lot of details about it. But what it looks like is it looks like it's going to be some kind of Grand Guignon Theater. Like, um, remember an interview with a vampire where they're watching the theater mm -hmm. show and all these movies? I have a feeling it's going to be kind of like you're watching that kind of a show and then you get sucked into it, I Ooh, think. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. But while that's happening, he's doing this here in LA in October, but he's building a year-round tension experience that's going to be in Vegas. Wow. And that's gonna be year-round, and it's put, put uh, the produced by the Russo brothers, who are the producers oh. of all the Avengers movies, Yeah, right? what, that's so yeah. cool. Oh my uh -huh. gosh. It's gonna be massive. I'm really excited for what's gonna happen with this. I, I'm. That's exciting. Delusion this year is going to be really great because what this year of delusion is, um, what you gonna call? It's uh, called the Blue Blade, and it's going to be more of like an Indiana Jones style adventure this oh, year. Um, but there's also going to like this year of Seventeenth Door. They gave me a sneak peek of of one room, and I was like, that's messed up. <laughs> that was probably the most shocking thing I have ever seen. At I really. I don't know what's gonna happen when people go through this one part of the hunt. I don't I know what know. I'll do. I, I was I was I was calling the safe word when I walked in the room. Like I don't know. I don't know if I could do this. Yeah. So that's a good one. And Universal Studios this year is gonna be so amazing. Uh, yes. They've got Poltergeist, Stranger Things, mm -hmm. a Trick or Treat. Oh, forget it. It's oh, like yeah. there's so many good. And the monsters, yeah. Universal monsters as well, classic monsters. That's right, the Universal monsters. And um, but there's also look Reign of Terror is so good. I I go to Rotten Apple 907 every year. My favorite home haunt. And they're in the they're in the beginning of the movie. It's the older couple that's uh, and you see like how they change their house every year. Yeah. And they're they're last year they did a really good one. It was um, the last year the year before that they did the Snow White. It was the year before they did uh, Snow White and it was really good. Last year was a was a hell thing. They're always doing something crazy. <laughs> But there's, there's just too many. There's like there's so many great ones. I'm gonna I'm gonna list more of them on our Facebook page and stuff. 
I've been compiling new lists of places that people have to go. Okay. And especially if they want to, ones that they want to challenge themselves, like Zombie Joe's Underground Theater with Urban Death. Have you ever, I don't know if you've ever seen that one or not. No, I, I was going to see that Midsummer Scream, but I was unable to make it, like, for their little show. But I heard it's crazy. It's really crazy. You have to be 18 or older to go for a reason. <laughs> it's completely <laughs> I mean, I, it's shocking. It's funny. It's weird. I love it. I've never missed a show that he does. It's oh, wow. he, Every time, it blows my mind. So, yeah, there's a lot of exciting stuff coming out. I feel like I missed a question up here. Oh, someone says, would you ever do a sequel, maybe about, like, the psychology of haunts and Halloween, or just, like, a sequel in general? For haunts? Yeah, definitely. Oh, Momo. Momo is upset because someone is walking by. Oh, It's so funny. (laughs) Momo is the name right now in The Walking Dead. That's, like, pretty prominent for one of the characters as their nicknames, so that's kind of funny. To us, at least. (laughs) Momo, you relax. Oh my god. He was very upset. Okay. <laughs> I'll, see if, I'll see if we can get... Oh, I know why. Because here's Henry. It's his best friend walking by. Oh, it's so sorry, cute. Momo. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I should pick him up in a minute. Yeah. Um, always, people are like, who are you talking to? Um, I'm sorry, what was that question again? I got distracted by my adorable dog. Oh, would you actually... <laughs> It's okay. We all we're all like now like everyone's like doggo doggo. Um, are you ever planning on making like a sequel for Haunters or like do you have any plans like to go somewhere else with the story or continue it? Yeah, no. There's definitely. Um, I've been in a lot of meetings about the next direction for Haunters, and it's really exciting. Um, we're gonna we'll see. I can't announce anything yet, but it it would be it'd be very different from the first one. My feeling is once you have something that's like one thing, the second one needs to be so different. Otherwise, why are you doing it? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, just watch, watch the first one again. Like when people were like, I wanted this to be more like the American Scream. I'm like then watch the American Scream again, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, th- that exists. Like why would, why do this same exact thing? It's lame. Whenever I see a movie that's like exactly like something else I already saw, I was like, um, What's the point? Yeah. You know, so I have a map of what I want to do, and I've talked with all the people that I want in it, and they're all, they all want to do it. And it's very different. It's really cool. And it also goes behind the scenes of things that um, are very secretive. Again, I mean, the one thing it would definitely do is go into a subculture of haunting that you're not used to seeing, mm-hmm. meeting some people that are putting on some really wild stuff, and digging very deep into the psychology of things. So we've been putting together something really interesting. We'll see when I get to announce what's going on with it. Yes, that's exciting. And I know, how long has like the process been from yeah. Haunters being like an idea to coming out? Because I remember, I think it was 2016, I saw your panel and you guys had like a trailer and like brought like Shar and Donald up on stage. And then I think it was like another, was it the next year? You finally were like, hey, we're going to be releasing this soon. Um, so like how long did it take overall just to like make it and then get it out and then, you know, it was on Kickstarter for a while. So what was that whole process? Four years. Four years. Wow. Four years. It was, um, when you're doing a documentary, you can do, there's a way of doing it faster. And the way of doing it faster is having a lot more money because then you can hire (laughs) A lot of people, and I've seen how some of these uh, bigger documentary filmmakers get things done. And I was like, okay, they had a lot of money, and they had a lot of editors, and they had a lot of camera guys. Mm-hmm. A lot of the time, it was me walking around with a camera, sound equipment, and lights, and I'm just like kind of like a one man band running around. Um, even with like six feet of track to slide the camera around to get those kind of like when. Russ is editing and the camera's kind of getting closer and closer. I have like six feet of track in his wow. house. I just kept, I, I would just run around. So when you're doing it by yourself, you know, there were times where I was able to afford other editors or other camera guys, but it wasn't all the time. So, you know, it's overwhelming. You have to like, film so much too in order to get such a good story, really cool story. I mean, the American Scream, which is awesome, there's only 60 seconds of Halloween at the end of the movie. And that's because they only filmed one Halloween. And even though he had camera guys at three different home hunts, 
in one night to get to the best scares, the best reactions, it's 60 seconds. Wow. So I was like, I, lo I love that movie, and I was bummed at the same time because I was just like, I want more. I want more of that. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, well, of course. You know, they're, they're only filming for a certain amount of time. So with mine, it's like, I want Halloween throughout the movie. You know, there were some people like, oh, it's just McKamey Manor. It's like, okay. When Donald's showing off his haunt in the beginning of the movie and he's saying, there's a door that shuts here, and then it's like footage from the previous Halloween that I'm now putting in there. You know, and it's funny because when he was describing that, he hadn't made it yet. He was just describing what was going to happen. Oh, wow. And then I filmed it, and then we put we cut it together so it wasn't exactly in order. It was in order of what's really cool and how to tell a story mm -hmm. and how do we show as much Halloween as possible. That's what I was going for. And so, you know, all those monster montages where all those crazy things are going on with in at different home haunts and theme parks, I was running around like crazy filming like a – so many hours at a time. Like, I, I don't even own a camera. I would rent a camera Thursday afternoon and return yeah. it Monday morning. In Los Angeles, you can do that, and they only charge you for one day rental. Oh, that's nice. Uh -huh. Wow. About to do something here. This is really cool. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know this either. I didn't know. And nobody told me. So um, I rented it, all the stuff I needed. And then it's like, okay, as long as I, now I can film from Thursday night all day night Friday, all day night Saturday, <laughs> Sunday, and return it first thing Monday morning. You can, and if you schedule a ton of stuff, man, I'd, I'd be down at McKamey Manor, I'd come home, I'd then go get some home haunts on the way, I'd go to a different spot, and people would, were seeing me all over the place constantly. Wow. And that's how I got so much footage. So yeah, it takes a long time, but I know what I'm doing for the next one so it won't take four years. It's never gonna happen again. <laughs> I'm never doing it that way again. You know, you know, one to two years, man. For a documentary, you need at least two years, I think, yeah. in order because you you can't control people. You don't know what they're gonna do. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, that's really true. Because like also, I feel like it 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 developed over a while. And it's probably how why it's so great though. It's because it took that time and you got everything. Um, yeah, you don't know who knew. Like when Russ's, you know, when one thing fell apart. And it's like, oh, when are you going to do that other thing? And it's like, oh, maybe in a year or so. Like, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess I guess we could just end the movie here or I could see what happens next. And I just wanted, you know, you always see those movies where it ends with, oh, I guess the next thing's going to be really cool. Yeah. And it's not the movie. Well, I want to see, I want to reach an ending, like a movie. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I feel like it had a nice end. It was like a real movie. You know how they say it's like a three-act thing. You know, you have this, and then the climax, and, and then, like, the catharsis, and it was, like, Donald getting a new job. And I was just like, this is so cute. I'm so happy for him. Because, like, I felt bad. <laughs> I was like, nothing is on his side with this. So he has so much talent, and then you finally get to see that, you know, good good ending for him. I thought they were going to get divorced while I was filming it. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Are they oh, going to no. get divorced right now? And I... It was stressful. Yeah. Because, you know, oh, I, I like do not like don't get divorced. That would be terrible for your life. Maybe it's an interesting part of the movie if it happened. <laughs> but you're like, you know, I don't want it to happen. Yeah. So it's a it was weird, and I you know especially because Donald is like, you know, my best friend. I actually I met Donald in the sixth grade. Oh. You know, I'm, I'm in. I'm oh, in the you're movie. the sixth like, grade. You're the sixth grade friends. Yes, so I'm the guy wearing the skeleton T-shirt with the Freddy glove. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, we did a haunted house at, at La Madera Elementary School, and we scared the kids so bad to get away from us, they broke down the cardboard maze to get away from us. <laughs> and we were both like the ones that got picked on at school, so we felt so powerful and brave. And but I know his family really well, and. When he told me I'm doing a haunt with my family, I was like, I'm not going there. That's like gonna be like the Manson family haunt. I have no oh interest gosh. in going there, you know. And then he convinced me, like, no, 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 everyone's changed. You know, the haunts really brought everyone together. And then I went, and I was like, oh my god, their whole family's getting along. I mean, these are people who used to get arrested during Mother's Day, you know. And I'm not exaggerating. On Mother's Day, there oh would be people gosh. getting taken out of that house in handcuffs, and the the whole street was like, "Oh my God, they're the that's the 
worst house ever and the, this family is a nightmare and then they create because everyone kept saying that they all have like the nightmare house mm-hmm. and they create he created the haunt nightmare on Loganberry the street they lived on oh my God. and then that haunt brought the whole community together and brought their family together and I thought it was just so fascinating that like everyone was brought together except for his wife <laughs> she like yeah, I've been dying to interview his family. A lot of people think about talk about Russ quite a bit, but they don't talk about Donald's mom that much yeah. or his brother. I was and, gonna bring that up. I was like, Loki, like, okay, sure. this this family seems like, you know, just seems like they had some issues. And I'm like, I feel like we have an underlying like plot going on right now that just never brought up. When the mom the mom kind of said something that I was like, um, when she was like, yeah, I used to intimidate him. I'm like, are you just like um, admitting to that? Like to the like to the son's problems, I was like, wait a second, red flag. She yeah, she let it. She thought it was good to have the brothers beat him up. Wow. She thought it was gonna be good for him, you know. Um, she thought it was gonna help him like want to lose weight and get in shape, like she said in the movie. And like that's the thing about the movie. When you see Donald with the dark glasses, like anytime I introduce Donald to one of my friends, they're always like, oh, look at him. He thinks he's so cool with those dark glasses on. And they don't realize he has those glasses on for a medical reason, because his eyes are permanently dilated wow. because of what happened to him. So I wanted in the movie for you to meet him the way everyone else meets him. And then the second you think in your head, why is he wearing those dark glasses? Or then you to get the answer. Mm-hmm. You know, whenever I watch a, a really great movie or a documentary, the second I have a question, a minute or so later, they answer it and I feel like oh my god they're in my head (laughs) and so I was testing to see when people were wondering that question you know because I really I wanted so badly I want to make a movie that is like how movies that I love you know I mean I movies that feel like they've gotten to your head and that they're as emotional as your normal life is like in your normal life you laugh you cry you get inspired, you get disgusted and freaked out, you get scared. Yeah. And when you make a movie that can take you through all those emotions, it's not just one thing, it's a real, you know, experience. You know, and that's, to me, what's, you know, uh, it's better than having just like a how-to kind of a thing. I want, you, I want it to be something you'll never forget, something that you'll want to share with somebody else and see how they're going to react, too. Yeah, no, for sure. I definitely think that came across, too. Thank like you. in everything I thought it was funny at Scare LA he did a haunt so like I think you mentioned that too on your Instagram it's like his wife finally let him do another haunt guys but I was going through one at Scare LA and a board drops down and it's him and I'm like I was like what I was like more <laughs> starstruck than like actually scared I was like hey it's you <laughs> kind of like walking out which is kind of funny but I, I was glad to see him like in haunts again I was like what that's cool that's awesome yeah no he, that same thing happened to me I went around the corner and it dropped he went John Schnitzer and I was like that is a very specific scare <laughs> <laughs> do you do that every time right? you call it one John Schnitzer were you yelling that at everyone before I came in or that's so funny I was wondering but no that was really cool I mean it's it's just so much fun to see him be able to do that and you know it was also interesting to hear him talk about you know why he won't be haunting this year you know, because he does, he has a kid now. He does have a baby, yeah. you know, and he wants to spend more time with his baby, you know, and which I was, he's like, I know that sounds really sappy. I'm like, it does. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I'm really proud of him. You know, I'm really proud of, you know, everything he's accomplished. It's incredible what he's done, you know, and uh, yeah, the, his haunt was always so special. Yeah. I remember like going up to you. I think I was like, "Where is that lo- like nightmare on Loganberry?" And you're like, "It's closed down now." I'm like, "Great." It was so sad. <laughs> well, the, the thing too was it was going to be a lot more about the, his street um, because he has a neighbor across the street that has had a haunt for ten years. The, oh. the, the same length, the same length as Donald's haunt was, like about a decade. And I was like, and that that haunt across the street was incredible. It was a father with like three daughters and they did like the coolest I, oh, I was amazed and I told Donald I'm like oh my god you must really get along with that guy you know across the street from you you have like two totally different awesome haunts he's like I don't know that guy 
<laughs> we never talked to him. I was like, what do you mean you never talked to him? He's like, he's the competition. I wouldn't say one word to that guy. I was like, oh my god. Oh my god. And then I got permission to film the other guy's hunt. I start filming his hunt. And then and it was incredible. And then Donald goes and calls me the next day. And he's like, you know what? I called him. I went over next door and said hello. And you're right. He's just a really nice guy. I was like, well, there goes that pot <laughs> out the window. <laughs> Oh my God. And I didn't, I didn't even end up showing their their haunt in the movie, and it drove me nuts. It's a really good haunt, um, but it didn't make any sense. Yeah, like if, so, it's weird what you have to cut out to leave room for. I mean, I didn't know I was going to get into the, you know, the fight or flight stuff as much as I did, but once I met met Char and interviewed her once, I was like, okay, I have to interview you over and over and over again now because everything she said about what it is to be the monster behind the mask. Because mm -hmm. when you first see the fight or flight reaction and you see a monster get punched, we all laugh. But then when you hear about the consequences and you see how emotional she is about maybe she won't even be able to do this ever again. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a trip. It's really crazy. And it's it puts that human perspective on the monster, you know, which I, which yeah. I absolutely so great it's, yeah <laughs> it's like a weird thing to like say about but i think it, it's just it's become such a culture like you said it's getting bigger and bigger that and then i don't think that people realize like sometimes this is your life and like you know like you or donald like growing up that's all they know and it is like a bigger thing that people don't really understand oh sure sense. like look growing, growing up there wasn't that many haunts out here we had Universal Studios, which happened out here in 1992, and I saw my program from when I went my first time ever, and Not Scary Farm, which created all the theme park haunting, all the sliders, everything came from Not Scary Farm. And then there were some home haunts, and like an independent haunt here and there, but that's about it. That was it. Yeah. Now there are so many haunts out here. It's incredible. There's no way to do them all. Yeah. You can't. And there's stuff that happens year round now too, so uh, it's incredible. I, I'm the amount of immersive theater experiences that are happening. Oh, Creep Los Angeles is coming back. Oh, I'm so yeah. excited about that one. Oh, there what they did for Lore was so great. Oh, I think Alone is coming back. Oh wow! And it's just so many good. Alone is a trip. Yeah, I've always Alone wanted to do really that one. I don't know. I just felt like it'd be I, a good immersive haunt. Well, they, every time they do it, it's totally different. It has nothing in common with the year before. Yeah. I did it three years, and every year was totally different. You know, it was a, totally blew my mind, and uh, it's really crazy, you know. But there's, yeah. there's, there's just so many adventures out there right now. Like, Not Scary Farm this year, and Queen Mary I'm so excited about. But, yeah, I, mean, I keep getting info from haunts, like, all over the country. There's... Oh. There's one in Connecticut that looks amazing. <laughs> it looks really cool. <laughs> one follow me like from Pennsylvania, and I'm like, this looks amazing. I can't go there, but it looks freaking fantastic. I know that's what I like. Have what's the farthest? Sorry, my brain was like, I say five different things. Um, what's the farthest you've ever traveled for a haunt? Uh, I guess it was um, New Hampshire when I went out for Haunted Overload and for um, Fright Kingdom in New Hampshire and the, 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 those are the two that are out there <laughs> you know and they're 40 okay. minutes apart you oh, know wow. but okay. yeah I just I felt you know I, I was I went back and forth to both of them and that was incredible but um, yeah there's a really cool one that's in Japan that I want to do so okay. one of these days I will I want to go there I definitely want to go to the Spookers in New Zealand mm -hmm. um, there's just they're all over the place there's this one in um in Mexico that I've been hearing a lot about that looks really incredible. So no, there's just, there's, there, there's some incredible haunts all over the, all over the world now. Yeah. There's a screen park in the UK that looks really good too, that I haven't done yet. And you should do like Haunters International. Yeah. <laughs> just totally. like I've, international uh, one. Oh, and you know, it was a really good one too is in new, in Louisiana. Ooh. There's a, I went to one in, um, called Rise. And Rise was in um, Houses October Built. It's um, the first one. Oh, okay. They meet the girl with the creepy mask. That was yeah. at Rise. And Rise is really cool what they're doing. They have a, a traditional 
maze. And then right next door to that, they have an immersive theater experience. And it's very good. I was totally impressed. They were both fantastic. The maze itself goes on for, I don't know, took me at least close to 40 minutes to go through the whole thing. And it was just wild theme park scares and all kinds of good stuff. Great actors. And then the immersive one, you were in an uh, in a insane asylum. You had to... And there's a part where you're signing paperwork and you realize, oh, you just signed a waiver. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then they start separating your group and yeah. tying you up. And then it gets wild from there. I loved it. That was, I actually did that one with Char and Char's daughter, Rosie. We did that. It was so much fun. It was really cool. That's crazy. That'd be fun to do. Like like House, the House of October, but just do a road trip. But like, don't die in the end, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. <laughs> I, I love road tripping haunts. It's a lot yeah. of fun. But there's times I get a lot of people together and we'll hit up, you know, three or four haunts in a day. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's go. That's yeah. Fun. A lot of fun. Uh, what was it? I had another thing. Well, someone, everyone wants to know, they keep asking, uh, what's your favorite movie? Like your favorite movie. Okay. They just want to know your favorite movie. Just any kind of movie? Yeah, just your favorite movie. Oh, too much of a film nerd just to say one that would kill me. Okay, like top I mean, five. I, Oh, this is too stressful. I don't like it. I'm going to submit the interview now. It's too stressful. I'll tell you, like, the movies I love so much. And I'll I'll break down some categories because I just love movies so much. For documentaries, Exit for the Gift Shop. That is the Banksy documentary. Which Have you ever seen that? No, I haven't. I feel bad now. Oh, like, I don't if you, no, don't, don't, don't. Okay. Do not feel bad. There are a billion movies out there. I'm not here to shame anybody. I'm not <laughs> here to quiz anybody. I'm here just to tell you what I love and what I've seen like a million times. Okay. I will tell you documentary-wise, Edges of the Gift Shop is such an unusual documentary because it's about a guy who is trying to make a documentary about Banksy and then Banksy, the street artist, who he, he does the, all the graf- amazing graffiti art, yeah. but no one, no one still knows who Banksy is. And Banksy started realizing this guy is way more interesting than me. So it's a documentary about a guy trying to make a documentary about Banksy, but then Banksy decides to make a documentary about him. Oh That's what gosh. it's about. It's so much fun. It's really cool. Exit the gift shop, The King of Kongs, A Fistful of Quarters. This is a movie, a, do- a documentary about two guys. One guy whose life was ruined by Donkey Kong and one guy whose life he became like a hero because of Donkey Kong and you will root for them you will boo you will get emotional I guarantee at least one part you will you will be in tears over Donkey Kong (laughs) and the guy who directed that went on to do the whole bosses movie oh wow he did this um I'd also say Kumare with a K K K-U-M-A-R-E Kumare is about a guy of Indian descent, but he lives in Jersey. And he decides, I'm gonna go to India, I'm gonna grow out my hair, I'm gonna grow out my beard, I'm gonna come back with the thickest Indian accent I can have, I'm gonna go to Arizona and see if I can get a following as a guru, and see if they people will follow me. People follow him and they believe him, and oh then he gosh. realizes, I have to tell them I've been faking this whole time. And you were like, oh my God, you're biting your finger. There's a- there's a part where I watched it and I thought I was going to throw up. I was so nervous. I'm like so nervous for this guy. You will laugh out loud. You will cry. You will feel amazing watching that movie. Kumari, I can't Kumari, okay. recommend it enough. Room, I would say The Nightmare and Room 237 by Rodney Asher. I've seen that one at least. I can say that. <laughs> Which one? Which one? The Nightmare? The Room. Oh, oh Room 237. Yeah, and The Nightmare, just watch The Nightmare. Okay. The Nightmare to me is the scariest documentary ever made. It scared the hell out of me. It's about people who suffer from sleep paralysis. And I did as see that talking... at Scarlet. They were playing that. Okay, I did see that. Yeah, that was crazy. I could not sleep that night because of that one. That's, yeah. congratulations. There you go. And the music for that movie was done by Jonathan Snipes. I got Jonathan Snipes to do the theme song to McKamey Manor in my movie because his theme songs are so creepy. I knew he'd be the perfect, really creepy song for there. And Rodney Asher, I got him to mentor me um, on my movie. Oh. Uh, also, Indie Game the Movie. Indie Game the Movie is a documentary about independent video game developers, but it's really about the creative process. And it's highly emotional, really exciting. And 
I fell in love with that movie, and I must have seen it over a hundred times, really studying it. And when I showed my movie premiered at Fantastic Fest, one of the guys, one of the main characters, and the most controversial character in indie game, the movie, was there. Wow. And he saw me, and he loved it. But the director of indie game, the movie, he also mentored me. And every question I had, like once a month, he'd check in and answer my questions. It was really helpful. That's documentaries. Oh, oh, Finders Keepers. Got to check that one out, too. Okay. About a guy who does, like, one of those storage wars things, you know? He yeah. gets, like, a storage container, opens it up, and there's a, 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 a meat smoker, and he opens it up, and there's a mummified leg in there. And then the guy whose leg it is wants it back. He's like, I want my leg back. He's like, mm, Finders Keepers, this is mine. <laughs> it's my leg. And he's like, I want the leg back. And it's this battle over who's going to get this leg and the story behind it. It's amazing. So, look, there's so many more documentaries. Movie-wise, though, I'm into so many, like, horror films, Nightmare on Elm Street, mm -hmm. The Changeling. Did you ever see The Changeling? Mm-mm, not that one. That will scare you so bad. Okay. That is the scariest ghost story of all time. Oh, Anyone God. can fight me later on. Fight me online. The Changeling scared me so bad. I couldn't stand it. It, it's with George C. Scott, who you might remember as Patton or in Exorcist Part Three, but um, the Changeling. If anything looks familiar or sounds familiar in that movie, it's because other movies stole it. This oh, is wow. one of the most original ghost stories ever made, and it's, you know, when people record something and they play it back, and something creepy happens. Yeah. Changeling, <laughs> and they did they did it better than anybody else did. Um, but there's so many like really badass scary movies, and I mean I like Saw. I love Hostel Part Two. I thought it was even better than Hostel Part One. You know, American Werewolf in London yeah. is so great. Shaun of the Dead, you know, is fantastic. But then just movies outside of anything else, like just movie movie, like Quentin Tarantino. I mean, yes. <laughs> he does something with. That's something with tone that I'm obsessed with. Like, he makes, it's like, oh, it's a comedy. No, mm -hmm. it's a drama. No, it is really scary. This yeah. is scary. Oh, oh it's, a, it's a love story. <laughs> like, when you watch one of his movies, you've gone through so many emotions. And that was one of the things that's always in the back of my mind while I was making Haunters was, can we really give you this emotional roller coaster the way I love when you watch... You know, I know I'm not making a Tarantino movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no one's head's going to explode. Nothing, it's not going to be that bad. You know, but it's like, can we give you that emotional impact that he's delivers on? I mean, and the music he chooses is so phenomenal. Yeah. He cares about music. And I'm so lucky. I went after every musician I went after said yes. And we have a crazy soundtrack wow. for, a, for a documentary. I mean, we have... Ryan Gosling's band, Dead Man's Bones, gave us two songs for Haunters. Wow. Um, the guy who produced, uh, that worked on that album, Alexander Burke, who also did music, uh, has worked with David Lynch, Fiona Apple, um, so many others. He did six original songs for Haunters. He did all the monster songs, all the hand clappy songs, the song for Donald. You know, for Donald, and if you noticed Donald's music, that's all children's toys. Really? Because wanted it, it to be like the second time you watch Haunters or whenever you watch it again, it's like the soundtrack, you'll hear the, oh, these are all kids' toys whenever you see Donald. And that's because it's about his childhood. You know, when you it's hear so smart. Char, oh, it's just like, you know, you're just trying to deliver on every level you can. And I'm a student of film, but I also just, I'm, so passionate about storytelling about movies you know I, I i love great movies and what do they do they deliver on so many different levels if it's just one layer one surface thing then it's not a movie to me yeah it's more like whatever so that's the thing i wanted to do so ever that like even snipes it's like his stuff is so gritty and crazy but for the third act of McKamey Manor, I needed something way crazier. And he played me something from this band called Empty Set. 
and it's a European group, and that that's that that sound that hits you at the third act of McKinney Man, the movie. That's what Mickey Mariner feels like when you go through it. You, wow. It feels like panic. And I had to go through, it took me so much to, those guys, you know, they were like, we can't give you this music. And I cut, I edited the scene with their music anyway, Skyped them, showed it to them. And they were like, oh, you, you're, you get to keep that. <laughs> <laughs> like, we, they loved it. And so, yeah, we I'm just so proud of all the music in there. And think about any movie that you love, whether it's a, a Scorsese movie or a comedy like Wayne's World like by Penelope Spears or you think about all your favorite movies you know Guardians of the Galaxy every mm-hmm. song that pops in you're like oh it's perfect it's such a great moment you know even Thor Ragnarok or Deadpool Part 2 which I just recently watched I went crazy for yeah. Deadpool Part 2 the music oh my god and they've used Dolly Parton's 9 to 5 that was so awesome you know so no like it's a very dangerous thing you just did by even asking me what movies I like. Okay, I'm gonna give you one more movie that you All haven't right. seen. All right. I hope you do. All right. It's called Wait Until Dark. No. It's with Audrey Hepburn. Okay. And it is a movie where Audrey Hepburn is a blind woman in her house, and there are three killers in the house, and they're trying. They're they're convincing her that they're really the police. And bit by bit, she starts to realize they're lying to her, and she starts to realize that they are killers, and they are armed, oh, and wow. she doesn't have anything to fight them with, and she's trying to figure out how to get out of this. And it starts off in the daytime, and then it gets darker and darker, and we get into, like, it's, I'm tell- oh, I get the chills thinking about it. Henry Mancini did the score. Look up the music to Wait Until Dark. Okay. It is the craziest it is so it's an electric guitar it's a piano that's out of key off key and it's a flute and it's like it goes dun, 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 dun. it's so creepy so oh, good dang. yeah i'll yeah, look yeah. that up man yeah, that, we'll that sounds amazing movie, 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 when you watch any of those i want to know what you thought of any of them <laughs> all right yeah Who now I... knows? Like, what i love might be like that's trash i don't know <laughs> true yeah i've done that like i want to tell people like your favorite movies and they're like i don't know what they're gonna say about it though <laughs> <laughs> um we have a couple questions here from the chat um background wants to know how far is too far like for haunts like do you think they're gonna have to keep pushing the envelope to stay fresh and relevant or do you think that like it can still continue with like boo scares like can that still like make it in today like i don't know i'm phrasing the question weird let me reread this like oh i i I totally get your what you're asking um do i need to put another light on or am i like disappearing into the darkness no you're good like okay no you're good so i'll tell you like how far is too far i think we showed how far too far was in the movie yeah (laughs) you know and i don't think look i think there's always going to be new innovations. I mean, look, horror films have always found new ways to get under our skin and to scare us. You know, I screamed my head off during The Conjuring, and The Conjuring did such a good job of using old school tricks and a couple of new ones. You know, when I look at haunts, the real creativity in a haunt comes in the storytelling and the use of space. Because look at what every great haunt has in common. They have limitations. They have a budget restriction, and they usually don't have that much land. And then it's like, well, what are you going to do with this little space? Like Zombie Joe, the one thing he does that's so great, he has a tiny little place. I saw that place with the lights on with nothing else in there, and I was like, this is nothing. This is not that big of a place. And every time you go there, it's a different shape, a different size, a different flow. And it's different every time. Sometimes just being alone in the dark and s- while you're walking through a dark space and nothing happens for a long time, that scares the hell out of you. Yeah. You know, it's, it's more about creative storytelling and the use of space to really get under your skin. But I see a lot of innovations all the time, and they're not like, how much can we hurt you and how much can we torture you? It's not like that. It's more, what are interesting ways we can get into your head? What are interesting, and there's even great boo scare mazes. You saw what Donald did. I may jump when that person with the giant hands came leaping out of me. 
Yes, that was so great. You know, Reign of Terror, Haunted House in uh, Thousand Oaks. That's like a, it takes 40 minutes or so to go through that. I think it's like $15 a ticket. Wow. That's incredible. It's yeah. massive. It's every twist and turn you take, it's a different style of haunt. There's everything from a clown maze to one room where it's like 15 robots. It's like crazy. So there's the high end with all the bells and whistles like Universal, and then there's something really cool and creepy that can happen on your street. You know, I, yeah. I sometimes people put together stuff with cardboard boxes and garbage bags that always blow me away. I'm always like, okay, this is really, you look at it and you're like, oh, this is going to be no good. Then you start crawling around and then all of a sudden they come up with one new thing and that's it. That's it. It's really great. You know? Yeah. No, for sure. Um, everyone wants to know, how can Grace be so stupid to go through McKinney Manor three times? Were you in shock when you heard that? Or... <laughs> 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 Let me tell you, like I, I, I can't, I can't um, I'm sorry. You're laughing. Look, you know what? You know, she's a trip. Grace is a real trip, and I thought I was like, wait a minute, I'm gonna find out something. Maybe this didn't happen this way. You know, maybe I'll. I'm gonna find out the truth here. And I interviewed her for like six hours because I'm like, I'm waiting for the shoe to drop. It's like, no, this happened. And I interviewed her and Carol and Russ all separately, and they all had the same exact story. Wow. And I, that's why I was able to cut it together so perfectly because it was like, oh, that's what happened. That is what happened. Grace was, look, she's, she was really interesting. I mean, think about it. Think about it this way, too. There's things about her that I couldn't even put in the movie. So she was born in Halloween. That's already kind of funny about oh, her. Oh, wow. And she, her babysitter took her to a drive-in movie. I think it was The Birds, and she was terrified. It scared the hell out of her. And then from then on, she just didn't like scary things. And then she went to Not Scary Farm and could not go inside the park. It was too scary for her. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so the, the part, I know, right? So the part where... That was what was interesting was when she brought up McKinney Manor the first time, it's because she lost her job in 2008. And she was really scared about her future. So when she said she wanted to, I love when she said it. She said, I want to quantify the terror I was feeling in my life. It really burned in my brain when she said that. Because I was like, that is an interesting reason to go through something like McKinney Manor to see, can you do it? And if you can, does that put everything else in your life in perspective? So that's an interesting idea. However, she went through it. She saw that wasn't the case for her. It was way too much. And then he kept tricking her back in. So the second time when he tricked her, he was walking his dogs. She was walking her dogs. He was like, oh, it's different this time. Don't worry. It's going to be better. <laughs> it was, And he tricked her into thinking it wasn't going to be that big of a deal and of course it was way worse than the first time the third time I don't know anymore dude I don't know how he got her the second time I don't know how she went back a third time she told me why she explained the whole thing and, I, and I'm like I'm so glad I have a beard because at least I can go you know close my lip because I'm just like I can't take it like when I asked her what she does for a living and she said I'm in <laughs> risk management that was I, was so like, great. I was like you're in risk management and you went through this thing three times you are, you are not managing your risk very well right now. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, that was. I don't know. There were some things in the, in there. I was like, this is like too perfect of answers, and I was like, what is happening? I know. Look, it, real life is way more interesting. You know, you. I would never have written that character. Yeah. There's no way. I mean, there's. I wouldn't have written Russ. <laughs> you know, like you know. Uh, the fact that he's like making a movie while you're going through it. And yeah. now there's a movie that was inspired by um, McCamey Manor wow, really? um, called Extremity. Oh, and there's actually some shot for shots from some of his movies in there. And I met the director and I was like, there's, there's some stuff in here. It's, it's uh, pretty familiar. And he's like, oh, you're the Haunters guy. And then we <laughs> hung out and then he had me interview him for the Blu-ray of his movie. <laughs> and oh, so I wow, watched his movie cool. and I interviewed him and 
it's a trip. It's pretty pretty crazy yeah. to watch a scripted version of it. And even the scripted versions are never as crazy as what Russ was doing. <laughs> yeah, but that's because you just like to be there and watch that and to see them going through that. Like, was it hard to like reach out to people and get them to say yes? Like you're talking about a little bit about the music that, you know, some were like, no at first. But, you know, you got like a lot of the big haunts, like John Murdy, not yeah. and just like everyone. What Like, was everyone just really accepted to your idea? No, they all said no. They all said no. And they said no over and over and over again. And they said no so many different ways and so many different times. And I just kept going. I was like, oh, I'm, I, I tried not to, um, to bug them too much. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I really wanted them so badly. I mean, John Murdy uh, really wanted to do it from the Aww, start. That's John Murdy just loves this stuff. But, you know, we had to work with Universal Studios. And that's a major corporation. And they're kind of like, who are you? Like, <laughs> I'm John Schnitzer. Haven't you heard? <laughs> Look at my beard. <laughs> yeah, like... you know, it was a lot shorter then. Oh, no. <laughs> the, the, the stress of the project made it grow. Um, no, uh, it was a lot of work. I mean, even Delusion, it took a lot of convincing to let me film inside there. They've, like, no, they've never let anyone film inside there. Russ McAmey was a lot of convincing. Because he really was like, mm -mm. All I, want, I don't want anyone to know anything about me. I just want them to look at the videos, mm -hmm. you know, so I had to like, you know, to be a director, you have to be like, there's actually a line Tarantino says all the time is like, you have to be a cheerleader and you have to really get people excited about what it is that you're trying to do. And that's from everyone who's doing motion graphics to music to any little thing. And you have to do the same thing to get people that want to be in front of the camera. And one thing I did that I explained to them was, I'm gonna make it cinematic so it looks the way it feels when you go through it. I'm not doing a flow through video. I'm not gonna ruin it. But look, I like watching a flow through video like of Jurassic Park, the ride, because it was like, okay, it's gonna be gone. I'm glad someone yeah. took their phone and I'm glad. But if a haunt just opens and then the second day the haunt is out, you get someone's really crappy you know, just a light on a camera walking around. It's like, what that? You just ruined it. You just ruined the haunt, you mm -hmm. know? And these people are so hard for you to see it with their lighting, to feel it the way that they want you to feel it. So I told them, it's going to look the way it feels, and I will not objectify you. I'm going to show you exactly how you are as a person, which is really hard to do in editing. Because you don't want to make fun of somebody. You want to show people, this is what it's like to be in this room with this person. This is what John Murdy is like. This is what Russ McCamey is like. This is exactly what Donald's family is like. I want you to capture the spirit of what it is to have a conversation with Char. And the nice thing is there's not one person in this movie. Every single person in this movie was like, that is exactly me. That's exactly who I am. I'm so thankful because I thought that, you know, you know, who knows? But someone could be like, that's not me. This is crazy. Yeah. All trickery. But I'm like, I did it. Even when Russ revealed certain things, that's when it was revealed to me wow. on camera at that moment. And when you film someone for hours and hours and hours for a long period of time, even though you got this big camera, it was a Canon C300. It's not a small camera. Um, <laughs> the barrier kind of dissolves and you have this connection with somebody and you're just trying to get them to share who they are with you. And I told him, he was even telling Russ, like from the, once I started filming him, he's like, do you know how this is going to turn out with me? I was like, no, but I have a feeling that when you first show up in the movie, people are all going to hate you. And then the second time you come up, they're going to really hate you. And then the third time, I hope we can find something for them to connect with at least on one thing because mm -hmm. I want every single person to have a human like a real human moment where you can connect with that person and go oh wow this is I can either understand this person's perspective for this one moment for this one thing yeah like and then after that whatever you whatever happens with your aunt or whatever happens with your life is going to happen and I have a feeling it's going to end with people getting into a fight <laughs> saying I would do it I wouldn't why would you want to do it right I'm like, you're, you're out of your mind and that's what happened like we've had Q&A's where people are yelling and screaming at each other <laughs> I was and, there at that one 
<laughs> you were there yeah. with Donald and Russ. Yeah, so Donald and Russ, I was there. It was like, I sat down, I was like, I didn't know what I'm getting to, but I'm like, wow, this is like super entertaining. That was so crazy. That, yeah. That was so crazy. I just, I felt bad for you, though. I was like, oh no, he's trying to show off his movie, and they're just like bickering. I was just <laughs> thankful that nobody, um, no one attacked each, they didn't attack each other. I was like, <laughs> yeah. they're two huge guys. Um, and they're both sitting right next to each other. I'm like, why did I put them next to each other? That was like the dumbest seat arrangement ever. Yeah, I was like pissed from the beginning yeah. about him even being there. Like, yeah, you can't see his eyes, but you can see his face. He was <laughs> not happy. He was really pissed. Oh yeah. Like him and his brothers kept talking about Russ McCain. Like, oh man, I was, you know, I was like, duh. Oh, please yeah. just leave it alone. And then they, they would see the trailers and they I just watched one of his videos. That guy's crazy. And, then, and that's what's funny, too. People are all saying, how come you asked every haunter what they thought of Russ McCamey? I'm like, well, number one, I, I did, but that was after they all told me what they thought of Russ McCamey. Like, everyone, yeah. no matter where you go in the world that does haunts, has an opinion. Yeah. Well... Then we're going to talk about it because that's that's fascinating. I want to hear I want to hear what everyone's opinion is. I want to hear what they have to say. No, for sure, because it's just I don't know. It's such an interesting thing, especially if you're I guess if you're in the industry, like hearing from Donald and stuff, like what they think. It's also interesting, like hearing from the people like who go through haunts regularly or the people who actually go went through it, like Grace and stuff. It's just so interesting right. to hear. Like, why? Why would you want to put yourself through something like that? And yeah, it's just like, it's, it's an interesting crazy. topic. It is pretty crazy. One second. Hey, Jen. Can you turn this light on? It just keeps getting darker. I feel like I'm like turning into like a. I'm sitting in the dark. Like now it's like dark web. Oh, now you can see me. <laughs> it, it was like it was a mood. It's the creepiness. It's alright. It was too. Creepy. It was too creepy. Now now you can actually see. Me. Everyone just wants to see your beard. To be honest, like half the comments are like, "Oh my gosh, the beard! Ten out of ten beard. We love the beard. It's a star." Yeah. I I just um, trimmed it down too. It was a lot longer. Um, it was so long that I was outside of my place on the phone with the power company and some guy came up to me and goes, are you okay? Do you need a sandwich or something? I said, what, was, what kind of sandwich? I'll take a sandwich. Yeah. And then he's like, are, are you lost? Are you okay? I'm like, that's my house. He's like, oh, oh. And I was like, oh my God, he thought I was a homeless guy wandering in the neighborhood. I go upstairs. I tell my wife, I'm like, this guy thought I was homeless. She goes, well, you kind of look homeless right now. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, I need to get a beard trim. I need to cut my hair. I need to, like, do something. Because I, I looked at the mirror. I was like, you know what I do? It was like, oh my <laughs> it was wait. It was perfect to be a pirate, uh, but not to be walking around. If I'm walking around with my dog, then it's like, all right, I get a pass. Right. Momo, Momo, come on over here. Oh, my gosh, yes, let's see the dog. <laughs> That's the only reason I brought you on. Here. I'm just kidding. Oh, one second. I'll go get him. One second. Think of, get the next question ready. I'll get my dog. All right. We're going to bring the doggo out, guys. The doggo's coming. Don't worry. We're going to get that doggo shot in this, in this, in this interview. Oh, my gosh. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, my gosh. So precious. She's so precious. Wow. That amazing. It's just amazing. Oh, he's so cute. Oh my god. He looks like a fuck bag in a never ending story. It's so but adorable. he's named after uh, Guillermo del Toro. Uh, that's why he's Aww. Momo. He's Guillermo del Toro Peaches More Schnitzer. Because the movie that I've watched the most amount of times <laughs> is Blade 2. Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> and I met Guillermo del Toro and I even told him Blade 2 rules. Like everyone wanted to talk about Pan's Labyrinth. I was like, no, Blade 2, it's all about. I was even thinking about putting the lower thirds Blade 2, but I was like, no, nah, it's going to distract everybody. I, Blade 2 is so badass. That's one of my favorites of all time. That's amazing. It's a, like, oh, my God. Just amazing. <laughs> You've seen Blade 2, right? Have yeah. you seen Blade 2? Yeah. Oh, so the good. The Reaper, yeah. best movie monster since, like, Alien. I mean, it was just one of those things where it's, like, such a good movie monster. It's such a badass monster. Like, how it just poisons you and you're paralyzed and so creepy I don't know. I feel like there's so many funny lines in that movie too it's so there's underrated so too it's just like it, it is enough credit. It is. everyone's wrong that movie rules 
<laughs> I love Blade 2. I bring it up all the time. Like, I'll be like some party. I'll bring up Blade 2, and someone's like, that's kind of cheesy. I'm like, no, it isn't. It's, it's just incredible. <laughs> Are you kidding? So badass. That's amazing. You know, whatever. I'll, I'll bring up Riverdale, Riverdale also. I think it's Riverdale's kicking some serious ass. I haven't seen that yet. I need to. What? <laughs> I don't watch anything on the CW, but, like, I'm just literally obsessed with what I said. Guys, right Netflix. after you watch Haunters, go watch Riverdale. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> if you're traumatized, then watch Riverdale and you'll feel better. <laughs> That's what... Oh, my gosh. Someone brought up a good, interesting point. Like, okay, so a lot of the things... Someone uh, tweeted me this. Like, they didn't realize how much stress that, like, it put on relationships. You know, haunting yeah. and stuff. Like, for you, like, did the movie doing this put any stress on your relationship with... Like, if you want to talk about that, because, like, I don't know, it just yes. seemed like everyone had <laughs> issues. Like, is that how you felt, no, you're, like, giving your life to, like, the Haunters movie with, like, you and your wife? You're exactly, you're exactly right. No, you're totally right. No, it totally, look, whenever you put all of yourself into something, then that's less time for everything else, everyone else that's here in your life. And... The haunt widows section really was, yeah, that totally became true. I was dealing with 200 hours of footage. Wow. I have like a wall of hard drives in my office, and I would just work in there all the time. And you know, it's overwhelming. And then you, then you'll be like hanging out or going somewhere, and then what are you thinking about the whole time? Is this part going to cut into that part? Is this part going to make sense? <laughs> To anybody else or what's wrong with that part did I lose that footage <laughs> so, yeah. you know so your your mind is gonna be on on what it is that you're trying to accomplish and get done but talk talk to anyone who's in a band a musician or anybody who does anything that involves um, timelines that are more than seven days a week and you're just kind of sucks you up your creative energy your time your brain so yeah the haunt widow section there were some people who were complaining to me about that They're like oh you're just showing like how it's like so tough there's people who haunt together and it's true there are people who haunt together and that's fantastic mm -hmm. but it's really interesting to see how people have to balance things and when they're successful at it when they're not successful at it I think we learn a lot about ourselves when we see that you know yeah. I was learning I was doing the same thing I'm watching Donald and his wife having that the texting back and forth I was like oh my god I couldn't believe what was happening that was so crazy and but I could totally you know it was I thought this movie was gonna take me two years so I basically said, we'll be I'll be done with this in two years and then it rolls around in year four you're like oh shit so, I mean, because there's always, there were things I didn't know about. I didn't think about all of the legal paperwork I'd be having to do. Mm -hmm. I didn't think of, there's a lot of things like that. Like, you knew there'd be some legal, but then you go down a rabbit hole, and you, next thing you're dealing, you're dealing with an entire law firm, and you're trying to figure stuff out. So it's a, yeah, you know, wow. the widow section is totally true. And it's, it's, a, it's a real thing, you know. It's a, when you do something like this, it does take a toll on your relationships, totally. Yeah. My family didn't barely see me. I, I didn't have any birthdays while I was making this. I couldn't wow. celebrate any of my birthday. There was just no, there was no time for it. My birthday's in October, so there is no time to be celebrating <laughs> birthdays while you're trying to get Damn. people freaking out in haunted houses. <laughs> it's so crazy, yeah. I feel like just doing anything in that industry, just like especially filmmaking, it's just like a life or this. It's sometimes it's one or the other. It's a lifestyle, yeah, yeah, it totally is, and it's a crazy one. It's a very crazy one. Yeah, you know, trying to figure out. It's like, you know, trying to figure out how to get people to watch what you made, mm -hmm. and then see, is it possible to get them to buy what you made? <laughs> <laughs> then is it possible to you know, try to convince people not to steal what you made? <laughs> yeah. So it's a, it's crazy, man. It's a yeah. lot of, it's really a, a real trip, you know. Yeah. But it's and. It keeps going. <laughs>
Smith. I know we're going a little over time. Do you have time for like two more questions? Is that chill? Yeah, yeah, we can do sure. it. All can right. Do it. Um, someone that's not, I, I lost the username who asked it, but what's the scariest haunt that you've like actually gone through yourself? I think last year at 17th door scared the hell out of me. It really did. I was really scared the way they did the, not every year, but last year they did it. I, there were times where I was laughing. There were times where I was screaming and there were definitely a couple of times where I was like holding my chest going, am I about to have a heart attack in this room? <laughs> like they really, they did some, they really got to me. You know, I even took, um, John Murdy from Universal Studios uh, with me for one of the days because he, he loved Haunters so much. He's like, hey, you want to go to some haunts together? I was like, yes. Aww, that's so fun. And then I took him to 17th door and oh yeah, we were throwing around the safe word like it was going out of style. Like, oh, nope, safe word. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty great though. It was fun. It was fun to see like what we could do and what we couldn't do. Oh my gosh. Um, this question, um, it doesn't apply to Haunters, but it's just a question that I ask every guest that comes on the show. Um, well, first of all, do you watch any superhero movies? I don't know if you're a fan of superhero movies at all. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you could bring, I usually do just Avengers, but we'll open it up to DC as well. If you can bring any superhero with you into the zombie apocalypse to help you out, which superhero would it be? You only get one. One superhero to bring with you into the zombie apocalypse. Who is it? I was about to say Deadpool, but then I'd probably be the one that gets hurt or killed, and it happens all the time. Um, although he's got the device that he can reset time, so that could be helpful if he chooses to help me out, though, because there were other people he didn't choose to help out, and that was really painful. Um, it's tricky because they all have their problems. I mean, Thor doesn't even have his hammer anymore. Oh, true. And, think about and that. his solution was to lose all of Asgard, so... <laughs> You know, I don't know if that's a good I guess he solved a problem but then nothing else I would say you know what I would bring the um, it's a tough one because I really it's so funny because I'll think about one and I'll go mm, I don't know man that one's got a lot of problems I love the thought process I, I would bring who's a good, who, who could I really trust superhero that, could, that would actually help me out Mine would be Doctor Strange. I don't know if that helps at all. Yeah. But look, who knows if he'll help you, though? Like, he'll, he's like, look, I'm working on something much bigger than that. Are you kidding? I'm dealing with Thanos right now. I can't help you. Zombies? Zombies are easy. Shoot him in the head. I'm doing something else. He'll <laughs> do a little spinny thing. I, you know what? I would say... Yeah, I do Thor. I have Thor help me out because of the Ragnarok was so badass with the whole. That was really ridiculous. I just said I, I do Thor. That that didn't sound right at all. <laughs> Not even what I meant. Don't sure, do that John, to me. Sure, okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, but no, yeah. when he did that opening of, of Ragnarok and they were playing um, the music from Led Zeppelin, mm -hmm. and so that, ah, it's like that was so great. Yeah. And I have a feeling. I have a feeling. Thor would go out of his way to make sure I'd be okay. And he's really good at throwing things at people's heads. So true, true. I, th I think I'd go with Thor. Man, it's a good answer. I, I love the, like, the major thought process that went into this. <laughs> it was like Wait. way longer than Start. any other guess. I love it. Starting to see why it took uh, four years to make Haunters. <laughs> no, <laughs> Let me think about that next question. <laughs> it's great because sometimes people give answers and I'm like, really? Like someone said Harley Quinn and I'm like, hmm. I don't know about that. <laughs> exactly. No. And Batman, forget Batman. He's not going to help you. True. Batman. He's always, look at, everyone's always getting killed around Batman. Can't keep anybody alive. Man. Yeah. Okay, well, we're you know, something, but I don't want to get into it. Yeah. <laughs> do it. Let's do okay. it. What you with? The Dark Knight. Like, honestly, when Joker gave him that address, I, I knew. I was like, this isn't the right. No, it's going to be the wrong place. Because have you seen Joker? Like, what he's done before? Yeah. Obviously, he should have known it was reverse psychology. I'm sorry. I was just kind of upset about that part. Like, he could have saved Rachel. No. Like, I, I knew it. I was like, I would have. <laughs> Look, it yeah. was completely ridiculous. You know, The Dark Knight. I, mean, I loved it, though. No, I do. Okay. I, 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 I <laughs> Heath Ledger's Joker was so great. Oh yeah, it was such a. But I remember when the when Batman came out with 
um, that Tim Burton did with Michael Keaton and um, Jack Nicholson, and people camped out to yeah. see that movie. It was that was crazy. I saw that first Batman. I saw that about I think six times in the theater when I was a kid. Wow. And there was a time where one of the one of the times where the sound cut out. And I knew the words so well that I stood up and I started doing all the words. And then the second the sound came back, I was exactly in sync with the characters. And it was hilarious because it was when um, uh, uh, Kim Basinger was on the date with Michael Keaton. So they're having this conversation back and forth. And I was doing all the dialogue back and forth like I was on a date. It was hilarious. I was just a kid, too. So it was really, I had like, I was wearing all these ridiculous Batman buttons. And it's like, it's not like now where. A superhero movie comes out every five seconds. Sure. It really was like a superhero movie what came out, and then maybe in a handful of years you might get another one. Maybe. I mean, it's a it was a really rare thing to be able to get those. So it's now it's just there's so many superhero movies that's like they're all the time. They're right. all the time. And the, like Star Wars, like I, you had to wait forever, mm -hmm. a generation, to get another one, and then Jar Jar Binks shows up and like ah screw it. <laughs> <laughs> That was the worst. It was awful. I don't care what any kids say. They go, oh, I grew up with Jar Jar. He's great. Like, I'm sorry. Your, your childhood sucks. That Jar Jar was awful. <laughs> they deserve I really, I remember, I camped out for Phantom Menace oh, with my friend. Man. And my friends from high school had the idea. They're like, we graduated and we're like, oh, it's going to be so great. Phantom Menace is coming out. And they go, we should all get tattoos of the new characters. And I said, how about we watch the movie first? And they go, what do you mean? <laughs> all the Star Wars, it was New Hope, Empire, and Return of the Jedi. So they're all great. You know, they're never going to be bad. And then I was like, yeah, yeah, I don't think so. And then my friends all got their tattoos. And <laughs> one of them got Jar Jar on his leg. Oh, no. And look, he's like, oh, look, it looks really cool. And then the movie starts. And this is after we've been, it was a, we were in Newport Beach, we're camped out for like a week and like playing video games. And like, I worked at a bookstore across the street, so I'd run to the bookstore during the day, come back out at night. It was ridiculous. This was a ridiculous time. The movie starts. The second Jar Jar Binks shows up on screen and goes, Misa, Yusa, my friend with the tattoo goes, no. <laughs> Ten minutes later, That's he amazing. ran out of the theater. He was throwing up. He was still like, what have I done? He turned it to a flower to try oh, to get rid of no. it. But because of the weird coloring and stuff, it just looked like a, a, a flower that had been melted. It's like now his leg is just like a terrible thing. It's awful. It's terrible. I'm so glad I didn't get a tattoo. <laughs> just, That's just an like, amazing no. story. <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> so that, that guy, I can't. So I haven't seen him in years. I really want to know what he's doing right now. <laughs> I should find him on Facebook. Right. I'm still. What 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 that guy's? What is? Oh God! It's you know at the Star Wars thing at the Hollywood Bowl. I didn't go, but I heard somebody went, and someone was wearing a Jar Jar Binks mask, and everyone started throwing things at him. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's so sad. He bought the mask. He knew what he was True. doing. True. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's I love that fandom too much. It's amazing. I don't know if you can tell back there, but that's um that's a Rogue One poster, like right back there. Oh. But, that was pretty cool. Damn. Oh my god. That that's... was pretty The Last Jedi when Mark Hamill went like this, and I was like, What? What <laughs> doing? And why is he a hologram? Why didn't he like if Okay, here's what I'm gonna say. I'm not going to complain about last year. Right. A lot of, but I'll tell you this much. When Princess Leia does a Superman in outer space and flies back in, and she does it while in a coma, while floating in space, then why can't Luke Skywalker go to where the stuff is happening and have a real battle instead of sending projecting a hologram of himself? Okay. It's like just go, go. Just, it would have been so much fun to watch him just. Use his hand to lift them around, smash them together. Mm -hmm. Crystal Critters. Just the name Crystal Critters sounds like so <laughs> awful. Crystal Critters. That was such a pair. Crystal Critters. 
and they were like, it's the crystal, it's the crystal critter. So I was like, no, no. But they, you know, Phantom Menace had stupid names. Senator Gunray. True. <laughs> I was like, Senator Gunray. Oh, oh Senator Gunray must be. A, this must be taking place in a, in a galaxy far, far away. Senator Gunray. That was right. so stupid. Drove me. Up. Oh man, look, Empire Strikes Back. I was the the what? Yeah. It was so, you know. So yeah. Did you, did you, did you ever see that YouTube video of uh, David Lynch talking about how he was supposed to direct? George Lucas offered him. Yeah, yeah. The chance to direct. Yeah, you saw that. Yeah. You want little teddy bears to take down the empire? Do they have superior weapons? No. You still have Darth Vader? <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> I love that. That was such a funny. Like, how do you describe that? Little teddy bears to take right. down the whole empire. Like what was That's that? What was that board meeting like, guys? Listen, this is gonna I be great. It. Just wait. <laughs> I know how to top this. I know how to end this whole thing. We're gonna have little teddy bears with sticks and stones, yeah. just going crazy, taking down the empire. Right, and then gremlins Dude. came out. <laughs> I love gremlins. Man, there's a gremlins documentary that's being worked on right now. It looks really, really good. What? This guy's uh, recreate. He took all the um, um, recreated the puppets. Um, that they made for wow. Gremlins, and, and met with the guys who worked on it, and he's making he's making Gremlins that are like they were then, and he's putting them in other movies too. Like he's, you should look it up. It's really cool. He, okay. His trailer, he has Gremlins attacking Batman. He's got Gremlins everywhere. Like he's putting Gremlins in all his favorite movies, and then he got almost everybody that worked on Gremlins to be in his documentary. Looks really good. I'm wow. excited for that one. Yeah, yeah that's that's that. really cool. And so do you have anything coming up right now, just like within your personal career, like other than Haunters you want to talk about or plug or like what's going on right now sure. with you? Well, first off, because it's haunt season, that's where my head's at. And I will tell you, like on our Facebook page and all over our social media, we're going to be doing a ton of stuff throughout haunt season. So throughout September through October, there are going to be tons of stuff we're going to be releasing a lot of new videos that you haven't seen before, and we're going to have contests, a lot of contests, a lot of prizes. I love giving away prizes. I like getting prizes, so I like to give away prizes. <laughs> so we have autographed DVDs where we got Char and Donald, Josh Randall from Blackout, Jessica Cameron, I signed them, and uh, we also have like the original premiere poster from the Egyptian Theater. That everyone's signing that too. And we're also going to be getting tickets to some of my favorite haunts. And so we're going to have like really cool prizes and fun stuff and experiences. And we're just rolling those out. One of the, the first one we're doing right now is if you tag four of your friends to our new trailer that we just put up today, um, it's the Haunters uh, Netflix 2018 trailer. Um, if you tag four of your friends that you, you think would love the movie and you share it, then you get entered into a contest. And for every four friends that you do that, then you get into another, I'll enter you again. And I, what I do is I'm doing this old school. I'm, I'm looking through it and I'm putting the names into a hat. And I will also film when I pull the name out of the hat because I hate when the contests go, oh, so-and-so won. It's like, how do we know they won? Right. You just said that. <laughs> Put the name in the hat. We're going to film when I pulled it out of the hat and you're going to see who really won the contest. And we're gonna have so many giveaways and we're gonna have some that are gonna be a bunch of 24 hour ones where it's like, boom, we have one day to get in on this contest and then we're gonna give away passes to haunts, passes to all kinds of stuff. It's, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I want this, it's basically to celebrate the fact that this is our first haunt season on Netflix. Wow. Netflix re released us in January, which was the weirdest time for a haunt movie to come out was right. january and you know buzzfeed put us in like their top i forget 16 most shocking documentaries i've ever seen and we were number three oh, and then that it was cool and that and the list got shared over four hundred thousand times it was like it went it viral and then haunters was trending on netflix in february which is like even stranger and then i was like look our first haunt season is coming up uh, that we're going to be on Netflix. I want to do something special and I want to, I want there to be a lot of fun and not just that, but we're also 
some of them haven't been announced yet, but they're going to be announced. We got into, we're on Netflix in America and Canada. So I was like, oh, where's there's certain countries we're not in yet. So I applied to these international film festivals. Oh, wow. And we got in some really awesome international film festivals. Uh, they haven't really they haven't really been announcing yet. We're waiting. We're about to announce. Once they do, we're going to throw it out there. It's crazy what's about to happen. And Haunters is going to go all it's going to go all over the globe to different wow, places. That's amazing. I, this is a Kickstarter project. I made this movie for under way under a hundred thousand dollars, and it got to Netflix. And it's on. Um, you can buy it on Amazon. You can get it on Vudu. It's like I'm thinking on like eighteen different platforms right now, which is so cool. And it's been, it's got, a, we're at a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes, nice. which is completely insane. And so if you look, if you like the movie, rate it on IMDb, share it with your friends. This was a real passion project. And I want as I want, I want this to, to blow up this haunt season. You know, I really, I'm excited yeah, Look, yeah. right now. Char goes to Whole Foods and people stop her and hug her. Oh. You know, people go up to Donald and, you know, go, oh, my God, I need to take a picture with you. It's like, uh, I love that. That's And it's really cool. So I am working on some other projects. Um, I have a virtual reality project. It's an Oculus and Vive right now. Oh. Called, yeah, it's called Flatline Experience. It's you yeah. actually. I, yeah, I saw that. Sorry, some people, like, bring that up. They were like, is that the Flatliners guy? And I'm like, it is, yeah. I was like, I didn't know that, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was doing that. I was doing that while I was in post production for Haunters. The so the last uh, God, almost like the last six months of editing Haunters, I was doing uh, Flatline Experience. So I was in a virtual reality setup, and then come back home, and I was going back and forth until my brain was just melting out my ears. <laughs> but uh, it's a crazy one. You go through somebody's near death experience in virtual reality, and it's something I've been wanting to make since I met someone that had a near-death experience like 17 years ago. And it's cool because it has these three commentary tracks, and one of them is like, this is bullshit, none of this is real. And I'm like, I love that commentary track because then you get to have an argument in your head with after the experience you just went through. And that look, that's part of what I like to do anyway. I like to create things that provoke a reaction and get you... You can't be passive. You have to be active. You have to actively take a stand. I mean, we've been finding out that people have gone to haunted houses that have never gone to haunts before, that have reached out to me saying, I've never even dressed up for Halloween until I saw a haunter. And they said what happened was, like, they saw it in January. And what happened was they saw the movie, and Russ drove them so crazy. And they kept saying... Well, what Char is doing is so sweet. What Donald's doing is so great. But Universal looks really cool. Actually, Delusion looks incredible. Right. And now a lot of people that never even got dressed up have auditioned to become scare actors. And now they're working at different theme parks. They're working at different haunts. And they're going. They're already planning out to go to so many different haunts, too. So I'm super proud of that. Aww. That's really awesome. I love really that. Really fun. I love that. And there were, like, thousands of people that took pictures of themselves taking themselves off of McKamey Manor's list and sending it to me. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's amazing. But then I always, I'll always meet someone who goes, yeah, I can't wait to do McKamey Manor. I'm like, what? What, what do you... Look, dude, there's always somebody that it's... that you Just go for it. You gotta do it. If that's what you have to do, then look... It's uh, people yell at me all the time. You didn't tell people enough to stay away from there. I'm like, it's not my job. Yeah, I'm not doing my. Plus, when has ever telling someone don't do that worked? Like, don't do that. <laughs> really not. Don't do that thing over there. It's like okay, everyone's gonna want to go. Just sh that's why I'm showing you what it is, so you can make up your mind for yourself. Yeah. Um, we are gonna have a big event also that's gonna involve. Donald and Char and a lot of other people, some of the survivors of McKay Manor, um, just a, a crazy amount of awesome people connected to Haunters, mm -hmm. people who loved it. Um, maybe I'll find a couple that really hated it and bring them in there too <laughs> <laughs> to make it interesting. Yeah. And we're going to have a really cool event that should be announced this week. Okay. Um, it's be announced on our Facebook page, and so which it's easy to find us. We're at Haunters the Movie 
on Facebook, at Haunters the Movie on Instagram. Uh, Twitter is Haunters underscore movie. Kind of lame. Uh, how, you know, if you go to our website, it's uh, hauntersmovie.com. And you'll see a lot of cool stuff on the website. And there's also, like, all the reviews. And our AMA. We did an AMA last Halloween that was the number one um, AMA on Reddit nice. on Halloween. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I, I said, uh, like, all right, ask me anything you want about McKamey Manor. And it was crazy. It was really, I, we got 11,900 up and 300,000 people have read it. And it was completely crazy. It's actually a lot of fun to read. You will, if you have a question, you will probably find it there. All right. I, I'm, I'll link that or like share it on my Twitter because I'm sure people will want to see sure. that here. But, um, yeah. Share, yeah. That, share that trailer, man. I want this new, I'm, the, the new trailer is kind of like the old trailer, but you'll see the, some of these reviews we've been getting and this beautiful wild graphics. The graphics are so crazy. I just went crazy. I went crazy when I saw them. The actual new trailers and the graphics, they were made by Soapbox Films. They do the trailers for the Star Wars movies, the Marvel movies, and oh, the Muppets. Wow. They love the Haunters so much, they said, come on over, and we just want to help you out. Oh. And the rest of the graphics were made by David Eagle, who was, when I was a camp counselor, he was my camper. And I went to a summer camp reunion, and he was there. And he's like, I saw Haunters. I loved it. Do you need any graphics help? I'm like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so my cool. gosh. Yeah, there's some really – and there's a guy who's worked with Edgar Wright on Baby Driver oh. with graphics who just did something for me that we're going to release oh. probably in a week or two that's so crazy. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. I'm so excited. I can't get Dude, you should. I'm excited. I, oh, wow. I'm looking at some of these videos and stuff that we're going to release, and I can't wait to get it out there. And I'm just, I've been doing all these interviews, too, with my favorite haunters, and I was thinking maybe I'll do a podcast with it or or something, because I just want to share. I, 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 I always say, do you mind if I record? And I, then I record, and when we have these great conversations. Mm -hmm. I had a great one with Houses October Belt guys. They were really awesome. They shared yeah. some great stories. We have we get a lot. We, we hang out as We've hung out a handful of times. We just it's so much fun. There's very few people I can we can really relate to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean the guy who directed the blackout experiments, Rich Fox, he's another guy, he's a great friend now, and he when I was having technical problems, he sent me his assistant editor to help me out. Wow. It was like it's it's a small world. We all want to help each yeah. other out. No, that that's really cool. Like, thought they would do that, too. And everyone's like, it's not the game of haunters. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> everyone's really sweet. I think, like, um, people get that misconception, too, a lot. But everyone in the haunt community is, like, really, really sweet and nice, actually. And they don't they think, like, they're real monsters, but they're not. <laughs> no, it's like a family, you know. And with any family, you're going to have that aunt or uncle that you're like, ugh, get me away from that one. <laughs> and then you're going to have the other people who you love. And, you know, you're going to have conflicts over what you believe. You know, I'm sure we all have, you know, I, I know when I go to home for Thanksgiving, it's always like, oh, my God, here we go. Nobody talk about anything. Just eat, eat the food. <laughs> <laughs> it happens in the haunt world also, but we're all brought together by what we're passionate about, you know. And I've been lucky enough to actually create haunts. I did. I made two haunts for YouTube, for YouTube Red Studios. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, and I did, I did something else that's really crazy. Um, Tim Burton hired me to do President Obama's first Halloween party at the White House. Oh my I gosh. did. Um, I actually have pictures from it on my website. Um, if you go to um, thebrainfactory.com, so it's thebrainfactory.com, you'll find it. There's even a picture of uh, the Obamas with uh, Tim Burton, Johnny Depp, and Deep Roy all together on Halloween, dressed up in costumes. Obama didn't dress up. Um, but the, his daughter, Sasha, I think it was, was it Sasha that was dressed up? It was Sasha and Malia, I forget. One of them is dressed up as the Morton Salt girl. Oh my god. It's really cute. Johnny Depp is dressed as the Mad Hatter. And we did 3D ghost illusions. Um, of the president, so you see, like George Washington turn into a ghost and stuff, you know. So That's yeah, I have a really bizarre background. 
Yeah, no, it's really. I, there's some crazy stuff. Oh my gosh. I've no. Been lucky that I've been a part of. Yeah, 3D wise too. Like I'm a real huge 3D nerd, so I've made some really crazy stuff for that. Produced really wild 3D projects. Damn. And that's so cool. Even. Yeah, it's really wild. There's a lot of crazy projects I've been a part of. But yeah, we're gonna do an event with everybody, and we'll share more of those stories and show off some of that stuff too. Right. There's, there's some stuff I haven't really, really shown a lot of other things. I, I was in such a wormhole just about haunters. Yeah. You know? But this is the last time, the last season where I'll be going haunters, haunters, haunters. And then, you know, hopefully we have the, um, the go ahead for the next thing. And I'm in meetings about something totally different. That's completely different and really wild. And I can't say anything about it. So. Okay. We'll see. Hopefully I can soon. Well, like, but. from everything that, like, I've been getting on, like, Twitter-wise or stuff, because usually, you know, we, we'll sit here and we'll talk about the movie, which we'll probably do tomorrow as we'll break down your movie and, like, what everyone completely thought. From, like, little reactions where I've got people sent me on Twitter beforehand, like, before talking, everyone just seemed to, like, really like it, even though they weren't haunters or not. And, like, people who do go to haunts or, like... I don't know if anyone in here has actually, like, been a haunter, but personally, like, I don't know. I just really <coughs> love the movie, and just, like, I feel like everyone could be represented by it, and I think you just did an amazing job, and I don't know. That's what we just wanted to say. Everyone just keeps saying, tell them that we loved it, tell them we loved it, and, uh, uh, yeah. It was just... Did anyone hate it? Did anyone in your group hate it? It's okay, guys. Let us know if you hated it. We're not going to... you hate it, just... I'm not going to... I'm not going to be... Honestly... I don't get mad when someone like I've I've had people tell me it's so, I hate this movie so much, and then I'm like, oh my god, what what did you hate the most? And then right. it's fascinating. Oh my god, I have the best one star review that um, it, this guy hated it so much, and then I like copied and pasted into a word document. I was like, this is like ten pages. This guy was like, and then he sent it to me in like Facebook Messenger, and it's like I wanted my wife told me to turn it off. She was going to throw up. She was so disgusted, but I continued to watch it. And it's such garbage, and it's awful. I'm like, oh, my God. And he sent me this whole thing, and I finally responded, so you didn't like it? And he's like, what? I, I just told you it's a horrible film. Like, do you mean horrible, like, that's so bad, or that's dope, or that's, you know? He's like, no, it's stupid. I'm like, stupid, like, yo, that's stupid? He's like, no. I, like, I don't know what you millennials are saying. He's like, I'm 50 years old. I'm not a millennial. I hate your movie. I'm like, so you just didn't like it. He's like, no, I didn't. I'm like, well, now we've cleared that up. I want to thank you so much. And then I saw him take that into other groups going, this guy doesn't know anything. Oh <laughs> I was like gosh. joking and laughing. And everyone's like, that guy's a maniac. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to have a sense of humor about it. It's like you work on something for yeah. four years and it goes like berserk on like, there was one review where this guy said, um, this movie glorifies Russ McCamey. Um, mm. But I can prove that Russ McCamey is a sociopath based off of stuff in the movie. I'm like, well, if you can prove he's a sociopath based off stuff in the movie, then I guess I didn't glorify him. You know, it's like, it's so funny to see, you know, but we have so many more like really great reviews and interesting comments. I've even seen people get in arguments on review sites about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, look, it's interesting. I, look, there's a million things people could be watching. Uh, so many other things you could be doing mm -hmm. that are happening right now in the world. And then the fact that people take the time to watch my movie and then it affected them so much, they have to say something about it. They have to do something about it. Ah, that's like the coolest thing ever. It's yeah. really, I can't, I can't get over it. It really is kind of mind blowing. It's great to see when people get it. It's fascinating to see when people don't and it's also interesting to see when people find something in there that I didn't notice either yeah. and go oh that's a different way of looking at it so yeah it's really uh it's a trip it's a trip did anyone have any other like crazy question that's different from everybody else's before um, I take off I guess we can ask some guys before we wrap do you guys have any like things that you took out of it just like let us know someone said they liked the movie but really didn't like Russ or care about the haunts it said they made him not want to like do haunts like Are there any haunts at all yeah that's what he's saying Aww. definitely never going to a haunt never going to a haunt ever that I, I you know what I that's crazy my who doesn't have, like, <laughs> I know someone ever. like that they're like they don't like to be scared at all like at all I know like that too but you know it's I don't know like and I get like 
if there's a person in in a movie that you're like, oh, this person's driving me nuts. But my favorite movies have are packed with characters like that that just yeah. drive crazy and that I just, like, I get fascinated by like, oh, this guy's nuts. And then I just get drawn into that person. You know, it's like, you know, I sometimes think about Russ in a way like, um, it's almost like Nightmare on Elm Street. What would Nightmare on Elm Street be like without Freddy Krueger? True. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a trip. But not want to go to haunts ever. That's come on. <laughs> I have to agree about that. They both did not want to do haunts ever. Are they saying that like after watching Hunters, they never want to do a hunt, or they didn't want to do a haunt before? I think before they're saying they didn't want to, but it says they just really don't like Russ or haunts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was his it's review. It's yeah. one kind. One I mean, kind. like with horror films, like when if someone says I don't like horror films, I just don't get that at all because I'm like, okay, what kind don't you like? Yeah, you know, because there's, there, there's every kind that's out there. I mean, whenever like Get Out is a horror film, Jaws oh, yeah, sure. is, a horror film. you know, Shaun of the Dead is a horror film. I mean, you uh, you know, it, it, there's there's every different kind that's out there, you know. So so there's a spectrum. Come on. Yeah. Not want any haunt ever. That's terrible. Who wants to do never a haunt? Come on. Even if you like set design, it's fascinating. Look at that. Look at this art. Look what. Come on. Yeah. Go through Halloween Horror Nights, and you can go through to, like once to be scared, once to just look at the freaking design from movies and stuff. That's my favorite part. Yeah. Just like no, looking at the. Don't get scared at all. They just they just stare at everything. Like, ooh, look at this. Look at that. You get I mean, so desensitized yeah, after, anyways. <laughs> Yeah. Man, I'm trying to see if... Okay, so I literally asked them about other questions. Um, they just really want to know about TV shows and, like, stuff. They always just, like, literally want to know if people are Office fans. That's all I'm getting. Oh, I love The Office. And I went to a party and I met Creed. <gasps> oh, my gosh. I'll tell Amazing. You too. This, was so, this was so funny. So we were having, like, an Office marathon because they were on Amazon or was it on Netflix or Amazon? Netflix. And we were watching every episode of The Office again. And then I was like, okay, I got invited to this party. And my wife was like, I just got to stay home and keep watching The <laughs> Office. And I was like, I got it. And then I went to the party and the first person that's there, Creed, I'm like, and I said, my wife is at home having an office marathon. It's like, oh give me the phone God. right now. He's like, Hello there, your your husband is here. He's embarrassing himself. He needs to be removed. She's she's like, what did he do this time? And I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> and then he he did his whole Creed impression, and he was so funny. It was so great. Oh the gosh. Office is look. I love the original Office, and especially the original Offices, the way they ended it with the uh, Christmas episode, mm -hmm. which was so. But I think the American Office. The fact that they took two seasons of a show that weren't even like full American seasons. These are they're not that many episodes of the BBC version. Yeah. And it went on for years and years and years. And there's some that that are hit and miss, but there's so many funny moments in the office. I swear, I that Halloween episode where Dwight puts the jack o' lantern on his head, mm -hmm. right? or when he's the the Sith Lord, trying to, Momo. Someone walked by again. They shouldn't do it, Momo. Did they? But yeah, the office rules. Uh, you know, it's funny. I I saw the trailer for the new Jack uh, Jack Ryan show. Mm -hmm. John Krasinski. Yeah, and I said I, I did it like it was a trailer to the um the the next season of The Office. We need you to take Dunder Mifflin overseas. <laughs> you know, I, just, yeah. I keep narrating different um, trailers of what it you know like this is this is the new Office. But um. No, yeah, I love The Office. That's one of my favorites. No, I, I'm, I'm a total. I, I, have you seen the show The Ozarks on oh, Netflix? So good. Yeah, I love Jason Bateman. <laughs> like anything he does, been, like watch it. It's fantastic. I just watched all of season two, yesterday. Oh wow! Wow. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe I did that. I really shouldn't. I, it's not a show you should binge watch because it messes with your brain. Yeah. But season two was so. Awesome, so good. Man, that I show know. freaks me out. Ozark and oh, I can't wait for the new Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. Cannot wait. Things. It's fantastic. 
that maze. I'm just so ready for it at Halloween Horror Nights because guys are doing a maze on it. And like, I just want, I'm ready to go through and live it. My, my mom was talking where this year we're going to get an upside down tree and act like we're in the upside down. And like maybe like get like Stranger Things ornaments and everything. That's funny. No, I know. Uh, I know one of the Demogorgons that's going to be in the maze is the Demogorgon, <laughs> and he's he's great. he's one of the best scare actors they have at, at Universal. Oh, I'm excited. He um he reached out to me because he like loves sh- seeing Shar in the movie so much, and he's a really fascinating guy. Um, he's a scare actor, but he also designs. He has an ar- a background in architecture, so they give him the mazes, and he comes up with this is the elevation map for every single maze at Universal. It goes what? through him. Yeah, his name's Troy. I think it's Troy Zimmerman. Really interesting guy, fascinating guy, great scare actor, and um, awesome artist. He has a ver- way crazier beard, and he wears a fez like. Every day, the guy has a cra- an awesome fez, this crazy long beard, and he's got a jacket full of like patches and buttons and wow. a hunt button right in the front. I love that. He's like the coolest. Troy's amazing. I think um, his Insta- his his Twitter is uh, Nature Trail to Hell, <laughs> something like that. Guys, we gotta follow it now, man. Well, at yeah. least like we're you're getting more. The more people that didn't get to watch the movie yet are, are like now excited because you're so excited oh, about cool. it that they want to watch it. But uh, yeah. Watch it with somebody else too, because you you have to have an argument with somebody once it's over. <laughs> you have to talk to someone, and if you see it by yourself or whatever, reach out because um, I love hearing what people have to say. I'll talk to people. I talk to people. We, we do live streams. I love I love hearing what people have to say about the movie. It's always fun. Yeah, well, probably, I'm probably gonna talk about it more. Um, I'm we're gonna do another stream just like for us to sit down and talk it down and break down how we felt. So. I'll let you know how that goes. (laughs) How much of an argument we get into it. Because, like, the Dark Knight one. Yeah. Sometimes they last three hours. Oh, Dark Knight. Yeah, I I, I like all those. You know, I like the, um, I love that, uh, I like Bane. Bane was really cool. You know, he was just so, this bomb is mobile. Yeah. This bomb is mobile. (laughs) What, what a lovely, lovely voice. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's, like, so I good, love too. Bane. I'm going to be honest. I, I, I haven't seen that one yet. I'm like, The reason why it took so long is I just watched my first Batman last week. Just watched Dark Knight. Um, just watched Batman Begins and Dark Knight for the first time ever, like, literally last week. So I haven't watched Dark Knight Rises yet, but I know who Bane is. <laughs> yeah. That's... That, that's crazy. Did you, did you like them? Oh, I loved it. I'm obsessed now. I love it. They're great. Yeah. Oh, God. Bane is so much fun. I swear. I wake up. <laughs> there are some. I don't care. I don't care what any of the problems are. I love the movie. I People are like, oh, it's this, it's that. I'm watching. I'm like, everyone's wrong. Everyone's <laughs> wrong. It's so much fun. And Anne Hathaway's fantastic. Okay. She's so good in that movie. I. She is she is such a, I don't know, she, she's always doing stuff. I'm always like, man, she's really good. Yeah, she's just one of those people that anything friend. she does. I know. I, I, I really, it's ridiculous the amount of times the Devil, World, the Devil Rose Prada is on in my place. It's like it's like someone will walk in a room and they go, again, with the Devil Rose Prada? I'm like, I know, I know. She just It's just too good. <laughs> I don't know. She's oh like, God. Anne Hathaway kills it in that movie. <laughs> she's so great in that movie. You really need a podcast. Like, <laughs> we would all just listen to you talk about movies forever. Really? Yes. I keep thinking about doing one. I just wasn't sure which one I would. I, I think about, like, doing one on, like, uh, I have, I don't know, I definitely either just talking about movies, but I was also thinking about just doing, like, like a low-budget film school of just, like, here's all the shit from legal to production to everything else oh that you could do for, like, no money like don't go to film school watch this well, watch this uh, podcast instead listen to the podcast instead <laughs> do it because I would, I would sign up immediately <laughs> oh my god I, look I, there's so much stuff that like film school if, if the film school has a great internship program like a really good one then I would and very good alumni support then I would say that's a good film school to go to but if they don't then it's like, 
you're paying to have, meet people that like the same thing you like. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And it's like, you can find people that are into making movies. You can find them at a local. You can find people that are into anything now. And it's so great that people can be unified and work on something together. I, I, I'm still friends with my friends that I made in film school. And we still help each other out. But I've also met people that I didn't go to film school with, and we're the same way. Yeah. You know, you meet people that are, like, have you ever, have you ever been to Film Independent before? It sounds familiar. What is oh, it? Oh, no, you would know. You would know. No, yeah. Film okay. and it's super cool. Um, you can take class. I, st I still go there and take classes. I love it. Um, I go and then you meet people that are into the same things that you're into from different t types of filmmakers. Like there's documentary classes, there's legal oh, wow. classes. I still go. I, I love it. I was just, I just did like three classes just recently and it was so much fun. And then everyone that's in the class ends up like, I meet, I always meet at least two or three people that are like, okay, we're friends now. And it's so much fun. Like there was a, there was one woman that was in the class that did a documentary that's on Netflix that I like, thought was so crazy. It was so good. It was, um, it's the, the one about the kids preparing to go to Generation Mars, about the kids getting ready for Mars. It's a long series, and she she did that. And I'm like, we're just sitting next to each other. It's so cool. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I wrote that down. That sounds really cool. Yeah, Film Independence awesome. If you get a membership, uh, it comes with being able to go to a ton of movies um, for free with the filmmakers there. Wow. And... You get to ask them questions or, you know, oh God, they did the coolest thing. They played um, the original Night of the Living Dead and they took out the music and they had a band called the Paranoids. The Paranoids are really good. They did a whole new soundtrack to Night of the Living Dead and they made wow. it scary. They made it so much. They added jump scares with the music. They did all kinds of cool stuff. It was really, it's really worth going to. I mean, there's, I don't know. I'm, I love all the different film collectives that are all over Los Angeles. There's so many. And if you're not in LA, there's a million other ones everywhere. Every community, you know, if you're in Austin, Texas, then you have a lot of outreach down in Austin, wow. Texas. There's, there's all these different festivals too. Like in Austin, Texas, they have a festival called Fantastic Fest. It's so much fun. I went there last year because they showed Haunters there amazing it was like so many crazy awesome films like mom and dad was there with nick cage vince vaughn was there to show off cell block 99 um they had like crazy awesome they had a fantastic feud and i was on a team with barbara crampton barbara crampton wow. is like a horror icon she was in beyond the gates she's the, the person in the video screen and beyond the gates do you ever see beyond the gates on netflix yeah yeah, so she was also the 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 love interest in Reanimator. She's oh, also she's been okay. in the, she's so I was on a team with her, and I was up against Leonard Malton and Doug Benson from Doug Loves Movies. Oh wow! And yeah, it was crazy. It was so much fun. I loved it. It was like you know, there's you know Beyond Fest. It's in L.A. Have you been to Beyond Fest yet? Mm -mm. Okay, they're gonna have a Cronenberg Film Festival at Beyond Fest, and okay. like they're gonna show video Videodrome. David Cronenberg is gonna be there, and so is Deborah Harry Blondie. Wow. She's gonna be there too. They're gonna show the amount of crazy films that they have at Beyond Fest. Last year, they had Predator, and Schwarzenegger showed up oh and did a gosh. Q and A. I went to Baby Driver and The Driver, so Baby Driver Edgar Wright was there, and The Driver, which Drive and Baby Driver are, are kind of based on. They, they're different, but they're yeah. kind of based on it. Walter Hill, who wrote and directed that movie, who's also the guy who did The Warriors, who also did, you know, <laughs> you ever see Warriors? No, but I know I know of those movies. It's crazy. Warriors is so much fun. Yeah. It is so much fun. I will tell you right now, that is, it's about a gang that has been framed for murder, and now every single gang in New York is trying to get them. Wow. And 
it, every gang in that movie is ridiculous. And can, <laughs> like there's a gang, there's a gang where they all wear baseball uniforms, and they all paint their faces, and they all have baseball bats. <laughs> so there's a it's a gang of guys with baseball bats. There's a there's every gang that's in that movie is like that's another impossible gang. There's no <laughs> gang that does this. There's no gang that does this. And the the lead guy who's in charge of all the gangs is like. Can you dig it? <laughs> he just keeps repeating. He's like, oh and every time he says, "Can you dig it?" They're all like, "Yeah." It's. I love the Warriors way too much. Yeah. Way the, too much. The chat is agreeing. <laughs> have, they, have they? Have they seen it? Everyone. Oh, it's so it good. looks like everyone's seen it. Oh my gosh. Mhm. It's so good. Walter Hill, is one of those filmmakers, that, if you read one of his scripts, too, he wrote the original script for Alien. Oh, um, wow. And they changed it a bunch. Yeah. But did he write the original? Well, he's, he's, well, he's on there as one of the writers. And he's just a really clever, interesting guy. When you read any of his scripts that he's he – oh, the movie Southern Comfort was another one. Really crazy movie to watch. Really suspenseful and wild. It takes place in the swamps in Louisiana. And uh, he's just so clever at coming up with – he, he's into these real macho guys in really stressful situations, and he also did he also did um, Forty Eight Hours oh, with Nick okay. Nolte and Eddie Murphy. That was his. That was the first comedy that I can remember between that was like a cop comedy that was like the a white guy, a black guy hilarious and shenanigans and crazy stuff and it was at the time there was nothing like it there was absolutely nothing like it and then it's just funny because then you get what you know Beverly Hills Cop and Lethal Weapon and everything else <coughs> yeah yeah Walter Hill is one of my heroes I just think he's so brilliant you know even the worst Walter Hill movie it's, it's better than most people's best I mean I feel that way about Tarantino the worst Tarantino movie <coughs> is better than most people's movies i mean death proof True. is not the best tarantino movie but i i've still watched it over and over and over again so much fun man sorry something's in my throat right now so i'm losing my voice all of a sudden hopefully it's not an alien <laughs> i just i think i like gasp so much i'm like name dropping and stuff Oh, I'm sure. Sorry. What is the movie poster behind you? That is—is is that the Rogue One? What? This is Walking Dead. Sorry. Okay. Then way behind <laughs> you. Is Rogue, Rogue One. One. That's Rogue One. And Walking Dead in the middle also. Yeah. So like that shelf besides the Haunters I added for you, um, all Walking Dead because I have a Walking Dead obsession. But like you're saying aliens because like I literally have an alien pop sitting right here and Ellen Ripley. Ripley. Oh, Ripley's one of the best ever. Your movie knowledge is freaking crazy. It's amazing. Oh, look, I'm, I I met Tarantino a couple of, a few times. And one time, I just, I got to go to the Kill, one of the Kill Bill early screenings. It was like the Kill Bill premiere. I have a picture of myself on Facebook with Tarantino when I had a Fu Manchu mustache. I was at the Kill, and he was wearing the Kill Bill jacket. Oh, and it's on my saved pictures. You'll see it. It is, that was like one of the greatest <laughs> moments ever. I kind of freaked out. No. And Tarantino went to everyone to ask them. I got lucky enough to be able to go to the after party. That was just oh my awesome. Gosh. He went up to everybody and said, what'd you think of the movie? What'd you think of the movie? And he's, and he's making his way towards me and I'm like, don't freak out. Just don't freak out. There's very few people that I'm like really like, just so, such a fan of. Like yeah. the fan of, I'm, I'm a fan of a lot of people, a lot of things. But not like Tarantino. Like, but Tarantino, it's like, this is too much. I'm. I saw Pulp Fiction in a sneak preview night. I didn't know anything about Pulp Fiction. It. No one had seen it yet, mm -hmm. and I saw it for the first time. It blew my mind. Pulp Fiction blew my mind when I saw that movie in the theater. Yeah. And I saw it once. For every month it was in theaters, I saw it another time. It was in theaters for nine months. I saw it nine times in theater. Wow. Yeah, and that's the movies used to you take it would take its time. So when Tarantino walked up to me, he's like, "What did you think of the movie?" I was like, "Oh shit, this is really asking me." I said, "Well, it reminded me a lot of Death Rides on a Horse." He goes, 
Death Rising a horse, Death Rising a horse, Death Rising a motherfucking horse. You seen Death Rising a horse? You saw Death Rising a horse? You saw Death Rising a horse. I made them watch that movie 200 times. I made them watch it 200 times. You saw Death Rising. Where did you see Death Rising a horse? I said, I saw it when I was a kid at Blockbuster Video in the bargain bin. <laughs> Fucks. I got it on VHS. I put it on at home. So if you don't know what Death Rising a horse is, this is what it is. It's an Italian spaghetti western. It's about a guy who sees his family get killed in front of him when he's a child. Then he grows up, and any time he sees someone that was part of that killing of his family, it goes to red, the camera zooms in, and he kicks their ass. Oh, wow. And I was like, he's like, death rides on a horse. <laughs> now, what I didn't realize was the guy who did Death Ride on a Horse also did the original Django and the original Inglorious Bastards. Oh, wow. Same guy. Now, is it a I didn't know Tarantino's next bunch of movies were all going to be dedicated to this guy. And he's like, what else did you notice? What else did you I'm like, I noticed uh, Scarface. He's like, what yeah. part? I'm like, Little Lopezers. So Scarface, <laughs> Robert Loja, he's the gangster, and he has a, has a, a baseball team called the Little Lopezers. And he's on the phone with them going, the Little Lopezers, they won their first game. Yeah, we're going to have to celebrate. And then in Kill Bill, just before she goes in to get Pippi Gay Fox, they have a Brian De Palma camera shot where the camera's pointed straight down and you can see the whole layout of the place, straight out of Scarface. And then she goes in the room and then the lady says, uh, Pippi Gay Fox says, why don't we go to the, to the baseball field you know, where the kids play Little League? And uh, well, we're all black, and then we'll attack each other. And I brought a little Lopez. He's like, it's exactly. That's why I did the De Palma shot. I was like, oh my god! Like, I'm such a movie geek. Oh my and god, that's so cute. I talk with him about it because it's like the thing about Tarantino that people realize and don't realize enough, or whatever, is that he has seen every movie, but then he's found a way to take the great movies and the garbage movies, the garbage movies that we love to watch anyway, that are just so special on their own. Yeah. And he found a way like a masterful DJ to remix it and to take the stuff that worked and to take the stuff that didn't work and find another way and then elevate it and turn it into even better art. He's like the Jay-Z of cinema. He really is. Yeah. That's what, that's why I love Tarantino so much. That's why every time he makes a movie, I will go there. I've been to mm -hmm. every movie of his opening night. Wow. And he was filming in Hollywood, and I went, and I took like a million pictures. I took so many pictures. Ugh. I posted some, but I'm going to just dump a ton more because it was just so awesome. The whole, oh, he changed Hollywood to make it look like it was back in the time of Charles Manson, and everything he did was, it was so much fun to look at. I don't know. I'm too... Too excited for his new movie. It's yeah, going to be amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's exciting. Uh, do you like From Dusk Till Dawn? Of course. Okay, that's my favorite, so like, movie ever. Is that... But really? I love, yeah, and I love how he ties that um, in Pulp Fiction, like, the big kahuna, like, the sandwiches, <laughs> and uh, what's it called? The guys in, like, the black suit. The black suit. Right. Like, the two partners. I remember, don't know. And, and he didn't direct it. He wrote yeah. it, but he had Robert Rodriguez direct it, and, which was cool. That's why he was... It, I mean, Robert Rodriguez, you know, and him got really famous at the same time. Because Robert Rodriguez's first big one was El Mariachi. Yeah. And El Mariachi, yeah. So, which is a whole, you ever read Rebel Without a Crew? I've never read it, but um, read I just it. like it's, his movie. It's, so, it, it's his that? diary from when he was making El Mariachi. Oh, wow. And he's telling what oh, happened. Yeah. It's really cool. And there's a lot of good tips and tricks in there. It's really fun. Now he has a TV series. I forget where it's at now. He did a reality show called The Rebel Without a Crew, and he had it, made everyone go through what what he went through to make El Mariachi. Oh, wow. Did he do it on his so network? I know he has uh, El, El Rey. On El Rey. I don't know where he did it, but um, it's really cool. He has a really cool, the 10-minute film school and all his DVDs and Blu-rays. Have you seen those? Mm -mm. He teaches you how to do different things. He teaches you visual effects he teaches you how to make a taco he teaches you like a lot of fun stuff it's oh really gosh. cool yeah but yeah from dust till dawn super cool i mean when it came out everyone was complaining about it because it was right after pulp fiction so everyone was just like this this is gonna be the next pulp fiction and it wasn't and they were all all the critics were so mad 
Siskel and Ebert said, well, the first half was great, and the second half was just a dumb vampire movie. And I was like, okay, that's where you're wrong. <laughs> exactly. everyone's, everyone's saying that it's two different movies. I'm like, yes, it is. You just got a double feature. It's like you Alfred Hitchcock. Two, yeah, that's sure. Psycho. Like I mean... Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, two, two different movies. You're right. The difference is the tone in Psycho is the same throughout. Even yeah. the first half, same pace. From Dust Till Dawn is like a real intense drama heist movie that then becomes hysterically funny, yeah. you know, hilarious and fun. I mean, it's like Full Metal Jacket. Full Metal Jacket is like two totally different movies in one. And when people get all that, people get, they all complain. Mm-hmm. Eh, it's too different. Like, you know, when people are complaining about getting too many different characters, too many different types of clashing worlds, going from one genre to a different one. To me, that's like, that's so much fun. I mean, come on. So many other movies that just do one thing the whole way through. It's like, ugh, so boring. Yeah. You know, surprise me, something new. It's so cool. Damn. You know, that's why Tarantino movies are so great. You just don't know what, he's always subverting your expectations. You think he's gonna go one way, he goes somewhere else. Exactly. The coolest every time. Yeah. Oh my God, it's the best. <laughs> Tarantino. That's why, you know, like, even Scorsese. Do you ever see his old movies? Like, uh, do you ever see Goodfellas or Casino? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen those ones. Yeah, those are. But then, when I saw Taxi Driver for the first time, I mean, that movie should have been brought by brought to you by Purell. It makes you feel so filthy. It's such a, <laughs> a disturbing movie, and it's hard to like do anything after you see it it's so disturbing Man. you know and it's not like it's like that graphic it's just it really disturbs you yeah. i don't know it's interesting to see and, and goodfellas is just yeah and casino is like oh my god oh my god it's so much fun and so great Man. it's just such a trip there's so many great storytellers out there like the uh, mark duplass do you ever watch the duplass brothers mm-hmm. movies uh, i love them i really love the duplass see, brothers do you see Creep in Creep 2? Yeah. Uh, what's the one? They have a Western. What was it called? They, like, redid it. An old Western. I can't remember the name. Because I'm blanking on everything. Right. Blast Brothers? Yeah. No, really? Yeah. A Western? No, it's not a Western. I have to look up the name. It's not a Western. But I'm trying to think of the name. What, what, a, what kind of thing is it? Haley Steinfeld is in it. They remade something. I don't know. I don't know. They do so much good work, though. Like Jeff, who lives at home, was so good. Did you ever see that one? No. Watch it. All right. I feel like I have just so much that I need to watch. I'm like catching up in well, life. You'll like, dude, you'll like Jeff, who lives at home. That's a really. That is such a good movie. Oh, True Grit. True Grit. That's it. Sorry, before I forget. True Grit. That's the Coen Brothers. That's the Coen Brothers, not the not Duke Brothers. Sorry. Brothers. That's okay. No, don't worry about it. The There's Cone too many brothers. brothers. Whatever. <laughs> there are a lot of brothers. The Russo yeah, brothers. The Col- which ones do you want? <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a lot of brothers out there. But, yeah, the Duplass, though, what they did, um, Jeff Lewis at Home, is so good. It's um, Jason Siegel and Ed Helms. They're both their brothers. Uh, but Jason Siegel, really? Ed Helms is kind of successful and – or is all he's trying to be, and then Jason Siegel is living in his mother's basement, and he's obsessed with the movie Signs, and he won't shut up about the movie Signs. Oh my gosh! The movie opens with him giving a monologue about how great the movie Signs is and why it's one of the greatest films ever made. Oh my god, that movie is so funny, and he's, it's hysterically funny, it's heartwarming. It's like Susan Sarandon is plays the mom, uh, Ray Don Chong is in it. You know, that's Tommy Chong's daughter from Cheech and Chong. Oh, really? Che- yeah. Cheech was in from Chong. Okay, I brought it back. But um, and Marie Don Chong, she was in one of my favorite horror anthologies when I was a kid, Tales from the Dark Side. Oh, yeah. I've seen that one. She's in The Love Story. That's Marie Don Chong. But yeah, I know. It's all... I've seen too much. <laughs> Someone... <laughs> I was joking with someone. They were just like, 
Leonard Malton when we were doing that quiz show. Yeah. There was a bunch. There was some answers he didn't know, and he goes. His daughter said, look, he hasn't seen all these movies in his books. You know, he had hundreds of reviewers help him with that. I said, what? That means like every Hanukkah present I ever got was a lie. He didn't see all those movies. And then Doug Benson was like, that's like thousands of movies, John. Have you seen thousands of movies? I'm like, yes, I have. Yes, I have. I have seen thousands of movies. Why do you think my arms are so skinny? I am like, and I'm hunched over. I'm like on the couch eating popcorn, watching movies. So much, so much of my life was dedicated to watch. Like when I was a kid, my dad would let me go to the video store, rent whatever I want, didn't even look at what I got, and then I just go in upstairs and watch everything. Wow. You know, that's how I first watched a Fellini movie when I was eight and a half because the movie was called Eight and a Half. I'm like, oh, it's for me. <laughs> I and I saw that. that, and I was like, it was so great. No, I oh love. Oh my god! Wow. Let's stuff. Texas Chainsaw Massacre I saw when I was in the sixth grade. Same. Loved it. <laughs> That's amazing. But, but you know why I saw that movie? Have you ever seen Summer School? Some, no, not Summer School. It's a comedy. It's so silly. But there's these two guys in it that are obsessed with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and they talk about it the whole movie. And then when it was over, I'm like, I got to watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I saw it right after. And I was like, it was so much fun. It's... um. It's a very silly movie, but there's some awesome blood and gore effects because they these guys are obsessed with horror films. They do these things where they rip off their face, and oh, they're yes. it's so fun. It's really, really fun. It's whatever I could go on. No. Any other questions before I run away? <laughs> um, no, I I think that's about it. Like honestly, if we start talking about movies, they're gonna go on for hours. But everyone's just like they love you. Everyone's like yes, Aww. I agree. Like everyone's like we're gonna rewatch the stream. We're gonna write everything down. Literally like grab a notebook and like yeah, writing it all down. No, we all aspire to be you. To be honest, that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just like that's know so ridiculous. much about everything about movies, and it's just now I really want to go sit down and watch like all those documentaries. Like, my issue is just I watch The Walking Dead over and over and over, and that's all I do. <laughs> I need to make more time, but no. There's so much more. There's so much stuff out there, man. But, yeah, no, like, it's a – it's uh, everyone has their thing that they're obsessed with, and I've always – cinema is my obsession. So, you know, I I know a lot about the stuff only because I've watched so much of it. Yeah. And I, I, I recognize extras from movies all the time in L.A. And I'm like, oh, you were, I saw this one, I saw, I'll say one quick one. So I, the place I'm living in, I met with the landlord and they were like, we're already renting it to somebody else. I'm like, no, come on. And then I, and the more we were talking, I look at the guy and I said, you were in a movie in the 70s. And he's like, he's like, I was in. In, uh, Harold and Maude. And I said, you were police officer number two. Oh, my God. No line of dialogue, by the way. He doesn't have a line of dialogue. He just does this. Does a weird face. <laughs> and I always had a weird thing about, like, who is this police officer? Who is this guy? And I wrote a paper about him in film school. Oh, my I was gosh. so obsessed with this. Like, who is this? Because everyone in that movie is, a, like, a brilliant actor, except this guy. And I kept going... There's no way he he's friends with somebody. And I wrote this whole thing about, and my teacher was like, gave me like a C minus. He's like, you just bullshit of this paper. I'm like, no, I didn't. And then I meet this guy, and I said, aha. So, here's my question: <laughs> Who did you know that uh, that worked on that movie? He's like, the guy that wrote it was my college roommate. I'm like, boom, there it is, there it is. Now we know the truth. That's amazing. Will you call my film, call my film professor right now, so I can get a better grade. <laughs> Now I want to right now pissed me off, and then we just started talking because I didn't even think about who wrote Harold Amad is the same guy that wrote Nine to Five. Wow, it's a totally different mood. Did you ever see Harold Amad? Um, it's been like a really long time. I feel like my my parents showed it to me when I was little, and I watched it, but like the best to show a kid. It, it's like yeah. the most uncomfortable love story ever. It's really uncomfortable. Yeah. But when I first saw a Wes Anderson movie. <sighs> I was like, yeah, well, the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, my God, this looks just like Harold and Maude. It even has the same soundtrack. And he, then I heard, heard an interview with Wes Anderson. The first thing he brought up, they said, Who, who's one of your favorite directors? He goes, Hal Ashby, the director of Harold and Maude. And I was like, there you go. It's such a 
people's influences are fingerprints, you know, and you can see it in their work. Yeah. When you see my work, I hope you can see glimmers of what influenced me and, and see it in the, in the way I'll use a split screen to juxtapose something, you know, or, or the way to, to make you laugh in a weird place yeah. or a way to make you, you know, care about someone that you were rooting against, you know, all that, all that stuff. You know, it's my, my hope, you know, is that there's so many movies and that I'm influenced by. And I just, I really hope that that stuff is what rises to the, to the surface is that you go, Oh, I can see a glimmer of this, a glimmer of that. I can kind of see those things. I'm really excited for what the next projects because the next projects I'll have a budget. (laughs) (laughs) Something with no money is tough, but you have to do it Mm -hmm. because if you can't show people what you're capable of doing, then they'll never, they're never going to hand you something. Yeah. You know, that's why you got to make a a great short film or you got to make a a feature film. You got to make something and not wait for people to hand you the opportunity because they don't want to, no one wants to. I pitched Haunters, I pitched a lot of projects for years and I was like getting this close and then it would never happen. And I was like, you know what, screw it, I'm making this shit. And I did it and it was a lot of work and it drove me crazy. But, you know, I'm so glad I did it. You know, it's really the coolest thing ever, you know. Met so many more like-minded people and more people that want to help make more stuff and I'm just so passionate about it and my hope is that this is all I want to do. I just want to make movies. That's it, you know? So hopefully yeah. everything lines up for the next other ones and we move forward and I'm I'm so excited to start talking about this stuff, but I can't until everything gets signed. It's yeah, the, until no, for sure. Because otherwise it's like... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. No, I don't want yeah. that to happen. We're all excited, like... I don't know, at least I am, but I know a lot of people in here are, like, really excited to see what you do next, especially just, like, your passion for movies and stuff. It just seems like, you know, you really care, and you can see that in your work. But um, thank you for, like, coming on and talking to us, especially going way over. <laughs> like, we just like to talk about movies and all that stuff, so it was, no. like, a lot of fun. Well, thanks for all the great questions, everybody. I mean, they, you, you had some really, some ones that really hit a nerve there. I'm like, you know what, that's right. <laughs> Let's talk about it. It's great. Oh my God. But, uh, and, you know, I appreciate those questions too, because they were thoughtful. You know, some people just go straight to, you know, isn't so-and-so just such a jerk or blah, blah, blah. And it's like, <laughs> okay, well, all right, dude, you know, we can name call, but it's so much more interesting to, to dig deep and try to uncover something. But I was, yeah. I had a really, it was a lot of fun. Well, thank we should you. do it again sometime. If you don't mind staying on for a second, I'm just going to say goodbye to them, and then I'll say goodbye to you, if that's cool. Um, guys, thank you yeah. so much for coming on and watching and hanging out with us. I hope you guys had fun. You guys can follow Haunters. All the links are up. I'll have um, Blue and Rum, if you guys don't mind, posting them again. You guys can watch it on Netflix. I think you said Voodoo as well. And buy it on Amazon if you want the extra 30-minute bonus feature, which I'm literally going to do because I want that bonus feature. But um, The only way to watch- get those bonus features, though, the only way to get it is if you get the DVD, the Blu-ray, or the iTunes extras. Okay. But buy it for the bonus features, but stream it on Netflix. Stream it on Netflix. I want I want Netflix to see They're both guys. way too many people and them going, wait a minute, this John Schnitzer guy has got a right. lot of people watching us on Netflix here. <laughs> like, hello, yes, it's Netflix again. Oh, hello, Netflix. A lot of people are watching your Honda's picture. Mm. Oh, really, Netflix? That's how Netflix talks. Yeah, we want to talk to you about more projects. Oh, really? That sounds interesting. All because of you guys. Exactly. I love how Netflix is, like, from the 20s. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) Um, Guys, he went and saw, like, Pulp Fiction nine times in theaters. We can just keep streaming it while we're even not home on Netflix just for him. Guys, he obviously loves what he's doing. Let's do it. Like we're gonna we're gonna get on that. I'll press them everything. We'll we'll keep just running it over, and then we'll buy it on Amazon as well to get that bonus feature. <laughs> but he's also doing giveaways and stuff on like Instagram. And uh, if you want to keep up, uh, we're gonna force him to <laughs> do a tips thing and show us what haunts we want to do. We'll get it. Um, but no, I'm just kidding. Follow yep. follow all of the social medias because he always going to haunts and stuff. So check out that. Um, thank you everyone. Have a good night. <laughs>